Live, live. We are live. How's it going, everybody? How you doing? It's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to the show. It is Monday, August 13th. Monday, August 13th. Uh, warm, kind of muggy day here in Creston. Uh, we are uh, definitely uh, uh, socked in from the uh, the forest fires. We've got uh, we've got uh, the smoke here from forest fires, big time. Uh, we are. Uh, uh, I don't think we have more than three or four miles of visibility uh, out in the sky. Uh, you know, we're surrounded by mountains here, and we see nothing. <laughs> and uh, Jen is uh, Jen is trying to sneak something onto the show here. Uh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Something's coming. Get ready, folks. It's our, uh, you know, we had our one year, one year anniversary. Yesterday was the official day, August the 12th, my day off. And uh, well, you got to celebrate every way you can, right? And uh, here, Jen is making an appearance. Look at that. There you see her. You want to see her. There she is. You can see her hand right there. Happy birthday to Traveling with Bruce. How about that? Look at that. We go all out here with the dollars. Uh, you know, we put the show on and we get the props. We do it all. Uh, Got to make a wish here. Uh, 10,000 subscribers. There we go. The wish has been made. No one will know what it is. It's a secret. Uh, but isn't that pretty? Uh, isn't that great? Oh, I love it. I got to love that. Uh, I don't think I can put that anywhere. You can see it. Oh, I know. I can, I can place it right here. You can see it all the way. There. Said, no confetti, no glitter. No confetti, no glitter. No That's confetti, right. No I glitter. said no confetti because then we have to clean it up. <laughs> I don't know how to be doing that. What a mess that'll make. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so we'll just leave it at that. See you, Jen. Jen is on her way, making herself pretty. Uh, she's gone. Uh, you know, it's hard. It's hard. You know, when you're, when you're, you know, as, as, uh, as uh, you know, you have the looks of a Hollywood superstar like that. To maintain the appearance, it's not easy. Uh, a team of specialists, I'm sure, you know. So. How she does it, I, I don't know. It's just, it's incredible. It just is. Anyway, there you have it. Welcome to the show. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Um, it's another day in paradise. Like I say, uh, we're probably going to be in the uh, low 80s today. Thankfully, we have backed off from those high temperatures that we were having uh, a couple of days ago, uh, back on Thursday, right? We were reaching, you know, just about 100 here. We were supposed to get 105. Didn't quite make it, but 99 was plenty hot enough. Um, and then we backed off uh, yesterday to the high 70s. Now it's about the low 80s. And our overnight, our overnight low uh, went into the uh, mid 50s. <laughs> that's a, now that's how you cool the house down. Uh, the problem is uh, that we couldn't leave the windows wide open because of the smell of the smoke. It it smells like you're a little not beside a campfire, but just a little away from a campfire and. Uh, it's nonstop, 24-7, folks. So we're surrounded uh, by forest fires. Uh, I don't mean like miles or anything like that, like something close. I'm talking about uh, between 50 and 300 miles around us are forest fires, just to give you an idea. And uh, smoke goes up into the air, and it gets moved, and it can go hundreds of miles and then you know reach the surface again, coming down to us. And uh, we, uh, we get... We get it. We're in a bit of a valley here. We're surrounded by mountains. So, of course, uh, air can get caught here and sort of settle in for a while. And unless we get a stiff breeze from the Pacific, it's not going to be wiped out. Now, we did get a windy couple of days the last two days, which is great. The problem is uh, it didn't bring in um, non-smoke <laughs> filled air. It just brought in more of it and just moved the air we had out. And we just got new, fresh smoke air in here. So, Unfortunately, we are dealing with that. Uh, not the only community to do so. Uh, Jennifer and I, Jen and I did drive yesterday to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, went to our Costco store, got myself a chicken bake. She got herself a hot dog as usual. And uh, we found that about, uh, oh, about an hour's drive south of here, hour and 20 minutes, it cleared up. Uh, Coeur d'Alene was beautiful. Um, cheers, everybody. Traveling with Bruce says hi. Um, Coeur d'Alene, we could see blue sky. We could see, you know, the odd cloud up there. Uh, we're here. I can't see the sky. It's just like a fog. It's like a fog that gives us about two to three miles of visibility all around. And that's it. We don't see the sky. I can't tell you the clouds up there. I'm sure there are clouds above the smoke. I don't see them. Can't see the mountains surrounding the town. Um, we're just socked in. That's just the way it is. So I'm staying indoors. 
staying safe here and uh, doing what I got to do. Uh, say hi to you guys and let's talk cruise ships instead. So if you're new to this show, if you're new to my channel, welcome to Traveling with Bruce. I love talking about cruise ships and cruise ship vacations. Um, we love talking about uh, just all kinds of topics. Uh, from time to time, uh, we veer off the kind of the main reason we're on the air. <laughs> And people start talking about other things that kind of get them. And uh, I try to kind of, I try my best not to get into that. But sometimes we just, you know, it just gets kind of crazy. But hey, it's all good. I welcome one and all. Uh, tell me, where are you watching me from? If you've never been here before, uh, where are you? What, where, what's your hometown? What's your high temperature going to be today? Uh, some of us compare price of gas. How much is your gas in your neighborhood? Here it's a dollar forty a liter Canadian. That's about four, about three eighty American a gallon for an American gallon. Three eighty U.S. A gallon U.S. That's what we pay here for gasoline. Coeur d'Alene. I just bought gas at Costco for two ninety seven point nine. Still kind of high uh, for the area lately. Gas was two ninety nine a gallon the last time I was in Coeur d'Alene about three weeks ago maybe, but uh, it hasn't dropped by much. It's just not giving it up. Uh, the price is kind of hanging right in there. I think the next time I'll be in Coeur d'Alene might be in about three weeks from now, maybe four, and hopefully uh, since it'll be September. People are back to school. The holidays are over. Cross our fingers. I'm hoping, like my camera here, that it won't change too much. It'll just go down in price. You notice my camera changes when I do this. I, go, I move too much, and then my camera makes me look orange. There I am. There, I am. and then I go back to regular again. Anyway, uh, down in Coeur <laughs> I'm hoping gas will drop 20, 30 cents a gallon because I save a ton of money when I go down there. I, like I say, I save almost a buck a gallon. So you know, 15 gallons I put in that thing yesterday in my car. 15 dollars. That paid for the chicken bake. That paid for the uh, hot dog with the free soda and uh, and more. And thank you, America. I love that. Anyway, what can I say? Um, okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your support, by the way. Uh, thank you. Special shout out to Robert Brandt uh, today. Robert uh, made a donation to my channel. Again, thank you, sir, very much. I really appreciate it. I know you're on holidays, too, which is really doubly impressive. Uh, and a big shout out to Debbie Manuel. Uh, Debbie, uh, I don't know if you're here. I'm taking a quick peek at all of the folks who are saying hi to me because, uh, De and Debbie is here. Debbie, hi, how are you? Uh, uh, Jen and I were uh, were just uh, over the moon, uh, blown away. Uh, we just had got, we had just gotten back from uh, the U.S. Um, uh, yesterday and uh, boom, uh, we get notification through uh, PayPal. Debbie Manuel made a donation to my channel. I cannot possibly thank you enough. I just thank you so, so much. You are wonderful, and uh, we uh, we appreciate it very much. All of you who are buying Traveling with Bruce merchandise, thank you. All of you who are going to the Amazon link down below here to try to buy product on Amazon, thank you. Someone did a purchase a couple days ago. We'll see if something happens. Thank you very much, uh, and also for watching the ads. <laughs> Watching the ads on YouTube. Uh, thank you for tolerating those and uh, it all helps anyway um, The first birthday like I say was my day off yesterday I just I just uh, enjoyed it with Jennifer to get some provisions and bring them back here to good old Canadaville and uh, We we did a lot of you know talking and and, and and surmising about the future of the channel and what's gonna happen And there, there's a little there it is. There's a little cupcake there and Little, little, ah, that's fantastic. Uh, I'll have to eat that later because uh, if I eat it now, I'll have it all in my teeth. It's just stuff. It's not pretty. Just not pretty. No. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we talk, I talk about the future of the channel all the time. What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? Where are we at? Where are we going? Where have we been? Uh, you know, uh, all YouTubers do this. We're all the same. We have 2,525 uh, subscribers, I think, right now. I think we added about five in the last day or so. Thank you, new subscribers coming on board. Um, I'm uh, hoping to uh, to attract more as the year goes on, um, and of course to, to see you folks on cruise ships in person. Uh, that's what I'm really looking for. That's our big goal. Uh, Jennifer and I want to get out onto the sea to uh, to experience uh, some more cruises and share them with you with meet and greets. That will be just the best. Um, I love the idea about. Uh, I actually like being paid to travel. <laughs> that's what I, that's the big goal here for this guy. That this channel will allow me to travel professionally um, so that, you know, I don't have to have a day job, that I just, I do this continually and then take it further. Travel uh, for a living. That would be just, oh, man, that's a that's a bucket list for me. I'm working on that big time, and some of you folks are helping me more than others, and I appreciate some of you folks are really helping. But all of you are helping no matter what. You're just watching me. 
you're just making a comment, giving me a thumbs up, uh, telling your friends or sharing a video for me. If you're sharing any of my videos out there, thank you so much. Some of you folks are sharing my videos on Facebook and it really makes a difference. Thank you, thank you. Oh, by the way, uh, on Saturday, I mentioned to, uh, to you guys who are watching me, uh, I said to you guys, hey, listen, do me a favor. Uh, my oldest ever video, the first one I ever did, uh, it's all about a uh, ferry crossing. It's a car ferry crossing in Germany that uh, doesn't have an engine. The, the, the boat doesn't have a motor on it. Uh, the river actually uh, brings it across because it's a cable ferry. The, the ferry is attached to cables up in the sky. There's like a, a, a big, thick cable that's suspended across the river. And there are wires going from the ship, from the front and from the back, um, attached to this cable. And the, the operator of this ferry boat, uh, when he lands on one side of the river, the cars dry off, drive off the front, cars drive on, then drive onto the ferry. He takes these uh, ropes or these wires and he, he has a, a little electric motor. He pulls one wire in and lets one wire out. And so the, the boat, uh, instead of being like this now, is like this or it goes like this as the river flow is this way. And as he tilts the, the river, the barge, the ferry, it, it catches the, 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 the current, catches the back end of the boat and pushes it forward like a sail in the wind and uh, or tacking, as, my, as Jen was saying. And it tacks across the river with the with the cable, the, the the wires that are attached to the cable go along with it to the other side. They drop off these cars, bring new cars on, and he winches it the the boat the other direction, and back you go. Fascinating, silent, no sound. <laughs> it's just great to watch. Uh, no pollution. Uh, you know, uh, no carbon going in the, off that river. Um, some people said, well, why don't they just build a bridge? You know, wouldn't it be cheaper? So said, actually, it would not be cheaper. It would be millions of euros because you'd have to design the land and the bridge you have to set the infrastructure up to handle all that. Then you have to have the maintenance of the bridge all the time. Uh, in the winter, you'd have to plow it all the time because in the winter, you have snow. Uh, here, uh, this little ferry, because of the, the traffic is so light, it just doesn't, doesn't justify a bridge, but it doesn't unjustify the ferry crossing. And so uh, you got kind of this instead. I think this is just brilliant. Uh, it brings up across about three to maybe six cars at a time maybe could be brought across. No heavy trucks go on this thing, by the way. This is not an industrial highway. This is between two little villages on one side of the river near Hunmunden, uh, near a place called Feckehagen in Germany, where my grandparents lived when I was a child. Uh, deep memories for me there. And... Uh, this little river, uh, the, the, the was it the Vase River? I can't remember. Uh, has been going through here for thousands of years, and this little ferry has been there forever. It's it was there, I believe, during the war years. Uh, they've modified it a bit from time to time. They've replaced the wiring across the suspension wire, all that. They've kept up on it, and it does have a lifeboat. Uh, this, uh, if you watch my video close enough, you'll see that there's actually a lifeboat. It's a uh, an aluminum uh, boat. <laughs> that you would you'd use at your cottage to go fishing, you know, and it's got a little uh, motor that you you know the five horsepower or ten horsepower engine on the back of it. You probably have to yank the cord to start it. So there is a lifeboat to this thing, uh, but I don't think it's ever had to be used. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I guess if the wire ever broke, uh, the 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 ferry would be on its own. It would just float down the river uh, until it ran to you know got grounded somewhere. It wouldn't go very far before it got grounded somewhere and it's not going to run into any industrial nonsense there's just farmland down there uh for miles it's it's the 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 absolute country of germany it's beautiful just gorgeous anyway you get a chance to see that video go ahead i encouraged everyone on saturday check out my oldest video the first one i ever made on august the 12th 2017 see how god awful i was and you'll see how shaky it is it's just me talking i didn't know when i made the video that it would be on youtube ever because I was making the video for my wife and my daughter who were back home because I was with my mother on her last trip to Germany. I was accompanying her. And I just was talking into this camera as I was filming this scene, thinking, well, this would be just something you know, like a home movie. And I'm just, that's all I'm doing here. And I had no idea that it would ever become a YouTube video that you folks would see. But uh, check it out. And if you dare, share it on Facebook to everyone you have, all your friends, and let's make this thing go viral. Um, it went from 115 views. That's where it was when I told you guys about it. It only had 115 views in a year, 115 views. I've seen it 10 times. I know friends of mine have seen it four or five times. So, I mean, it's got maybe 80 views. <laughs> 
in a year. That means no one has ever watched this video. It's now at 150 or 155 views. It's going viral because of you guys. <laughs> I thought, well, let's see if we can have some fun. And I get thumbs ups. I had only three thumbs ups and three thumbs downs on this video because that's how bad it is. Uh, last time I looked at it, nine up and three down. How about that? That video has got some comments on it and uh, positive comment. Well, we'll take we'll take anything we can get. This little old video, and I did notice some of you folks because I can see them now. I can see these videos being watched. The second video, the third video, the you folks were watching those too. <laughs> Wanting to see. Well, what was he doing in the first month that he was on the air? Uh, what kind of videos was he posting? And you'll see, uh, if you do want to do that, uh, you want to do a, like a binge watch of my channel, well, I invite you to do it all. There's 350 videos, but these first, I don't know, 40 or 50 that I did, maybe more, they were all just regular videos, anywhere from three to eight minutes long, 10 minutes long. And they're about Germany, they're about Berlin, uh, which is, you know, I love very much. And um, I did a couple of videos about California. I did a video about the uh, the largest outdoor uh, Garden Railway uh, in Panoma, uh, Pom Pomona, Pomona, California, the LA, the Los Angeles Fair. I did a video about that. That's a fascinating place. Uh, I did a video about that. I think you'll see Jen in there. If you watch that video, you might see Jen uh, because she and I were, were walking around there. You might catch a bit of her there. Uh, and so if any of you are curious, what does Jen look like? You might, you might, you know, I don't know if you'll see a hand or an arm or <laughs> a leg. I don't know. Check it out. Oh, uh, anyway, we had some fun with those early videos. Again, I was just starting out, had no idea where this channel was going to go. But what I started to notice, not not even a few weeks into it, as soon as I mentioned cruise ships, whoa, the views would go up on cruise on cruise videos. Anything I talked about cruise shipping, I started posting videos about being on cruise ships on my on my travels. And people were reacting and commenting and asking me questions. And I thought, boy, there's a real need for folks who want to have some of this information and they have questions they want to answer. I'm more than happy to do it. So that's how it went. That's how this channel got started. January the 6th, I started live streaming because I figured out, boy, you know, if I can do this live every day and just answer your questions on the spot and give you up to date information that happens daily. This might work, and it's working. People like it, and uh, and the uh, reach is global, which is fantastic. I have Australians, New Zealanders, Brits, Germans, uh, uh, Argentinians, uh, Canadians, Americans watching me from all over the place live, and, of course, on the regular shows, and so I try to do both. I did load up a video this morning. If you haven't seen it, catch it today. Uh, it's called What Not to Buy on a Cruise Ship. Don't buy this stuff on a cruise ship is what I'm telling you to do. It's about a five-minute video. Check it out after the show if you like, and let me know what you think of it. Give it a thumbs up if you like it, and give me a comment on it, and uh, help that uh, help that with a couple of shares on your Facebook as well, and let's get that video out there. It's definitely a how-to video for newbies, uh, but even for those of you who've been around a while, uh, you know, a couple of good points to consider, and I appreciate all your comments, and again, all of your support. Thank you, every one of you, for your best wishes, your congratulations. Uh, your kind words, uh, I make sure Jen sees it. I show her. I say, look at this. Look at this comment here from this person. And look at this comment. Isn't this great? Thank you all very, very much. I'm humbled. Uh, Peter Heckema signed in today at uh, at uh, 412. He said, Peter, is Peter says, hi, Bruce. Uh, and all, a little sun, a little cloud, and a little rain in Tarpon Springs, Florida today, and about 90 degrees. Bruce, I hope you had a good weekend and a good trip to Costco. <clears throat> we did. It was just fine. Got to tell you, though, coming back to Canada, oh, man. What is going on with the Canadian border? Uh, you know, I, I don't understand it. We had a lineup. There were probably 10 cars. This is just to kind of, you know, just to under, set the table for you. If you come into Canada in Vancouver, uh, Western Canada, or if you come into Canada from Detroit through Windsor, Ontario, or uh, in Buffalo, New York, or whatever, get ready for lineups. Okay, that's typical. There's, there's hundreds of cars in line. Yeah, yeah. And they've got, you know, agents and agents and agents and all these like toll booths, you know, and they'll... They'll take care of you, and you have to declare your intentions and all that good stuff. But in Crested, <laughs> little old Crested here, uh, we have one lane. You come in one lane, and we have one booth. <laughs> we have our one agent with a second or a third agent inside the little shack that we have. And our, our, our little border crossing is puny. It's only open till 11 at night. It, they close it from 11 at night until 7 in the morning. Then they reopen it. Same on the American side. 
Uh, the American building is bigger than our building. I think the American building is about four times the size of our building, and they've definitely got five or six guys in there. They, they got way more guys on America's border uh, side than on our Canadian side by, by far, uh, you know, because we are the rowdy Canadians. I mean, we are troublemakers. Oh, man. We come into the U.S. to spend money, causing havoc everywhere. Anyway, coming into the U.S. is a pleasure. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure. I just show them your passport. They ask you where, where, uh, where are you headed. And they say, "Oh, we're going to Costco. Get some groceries today." Ah, let's have a good day, folks. You know, they just swipe in the passport to make sure you're not on the no-fly list or whatever those lists are, and making sure you're okay. In my case, and in Jennifer's case, they swipe our passports, and I think their computer says, "Oh yeah, they were just through here three weeks ago, and they were through here two weeks before that, and uh, they were here three weeks before that." We go through all the time. So on the American side, it's just yeah, go. Because we're Canadians. They just wonder, are you bringing anything with you? No. You got a gun on you? No. Yeah. Just go. Canada coming back. Oh, Canada. Oh, yeah. You're coming back to your own country. Oh, yeah. What do you got? What, do you, what did you buy? What, yeah, we want to see it. want to know. Oh, it's a big deal. They've become tax collectors. Our border guards are actually bona fide, dressed up, you know, with a gun and and the flak jacket and all the Americans too. I mean, the American guys get the flak jackets on too. They're loaded. They got the weaponry. But in Canada, they're they're tax collectors. They're now looking for cash. <laughs> it's pathetic. We have coming to Canada the worst uh, deal. Uh, you Americans, you it's great for you guys. I think you guys get an exemption that's massive. Uh, tell me, those of you in the United States, if you're driving back in the USA from Mexico or from Canada, how much can you bring across duty-free? How much booze can you bring across? How much, uh, let's say, cigarettes or, or groceries or clothing or whatever? What's your exemptions? Because in Canada, here, we come across the border, and if we don't spend at least one night in the United States, technically, we're not allowed to bring anything. Zip. We have to pay duty on everything we bring back. I'm allowed to buy gas down there. They can't charge me duty on that technically because how do you know how much did I buy? Uh, but if I bring across some Costco stuff, they could theoretically make me buy, pay duty on, on everything I bring across. And there are limits as to how much I can bring across. If I bring more than one gallon of milk, they could nail me more. If I bring back more than a dozen eggs, they can nail me more because of the dairy quotas. All this stuff we have in Canada that's protected to protect our farmers so that I pay five bucks a gallon for milk here or I pay two bucks a gallon for milk in the States and bring it back. Do the math. Guess what I do? I buy it there. Unbelievable. Anyway, coming back yesterday, cars. Oh, 10, 15 cars leading in line. We didn't move for 15 minutes. Did not move. And the cars are piling up behind me. And there's a bit of a distance between the Canadian Customs Building and the American Customs Building. It's about... 300 yards maybe and it was half cars as every car kept coming from the u.s back to canada get in line we're all waiting i was wondering geez are we going to be lined up right into the united states because <laughs> what's going on well they had a guy because i noticed there were two rcmp cruisers who had been brought in from the detachment in creston apparently we had a guy in a pickup truck with a whole bunch of stuff and they went through everything on this guy I don't know if he had something bad or they thought he did, but oh, it stopped everything. And instead of having, you know, two or three extra border guards to handle the rest of us who are just trying to get home, we had to sit there and wait. And you can't say a damn thing. You cannot. Oh, don't you bitch about it. Don't you complain to a customs guy. They have ultimate power to do whatever the hell they want and no one stops them. No one checks their actions. You're, no judge will ever rule in your favor if you end up in court with these guys. They have all power on anything. Same on the U.S. side. And I think it's too much and it's unregulated and it's unchecked, but that's just me. I know there's many like me who feel the same way, but oh man, these people. And they look at us like we're crooks. They really do. They, they, they say they're here for our safety. They're collecting taxes. And in Canada, it's big business at the border. It's big business. And we average Canadians are fed up with it. Uh, it's just ridiculous. Uh, no politician in this country has the guts to run uh, for election to say, you vote me in, 
I'm bringing those uh, customs guys back in line. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to give Canadians a $200 exemption or a $500 exemption or a $1,000 exemption. Bring back all you want because right now it's nickel and dime time on everything. It's ridiculous. But yesterday we did get through, no problem. We got to the front of the line and the young guy asked us how long we were there. Five hours. Where'd you go? Coeur d'Alene went to shopping at Costco. And he looked at us. He said, why would you go to, why would you go to the United States to buy groceries? And I'm thinking to myself, you idiot. You moron, uh, you're asking me a question. You know the answer to that question. And you're asking me a stupid question. And you know it's a stupid question. And you're pissing me off. And they just look at you like, oh, why would you go to the States to buy groceries? Ah. Man, I hate people like that. I just don't like it. But what are you going to do? It's the world in which we're in today. I wonder what it's like for you guys out there when you cross the border. Tell me. Robert Brandt, hi, Bruce, and all. A cool 66 in Nuremberg, Germany, as we sail on the river. It has risen to a passable level, and we've not had to get off the ship. He is on the Viking River cruise right now in Germany and uh, letting me know how he's doing, and he's joining us live. How about that? Robert, thank you again for your contribution to my channel. You are fantastic. Tracy Dunlop is saying hi, Bruce, and all. Nice day in Naples, 89 right now with a slight breeze. Everyone starts saying hi to everybody else. I'm just going to whip through here. Robert Brandt's here saying hi to everybody. Uh, Peter is here. Peter Heckham is here. Uh, uh, Robert says he spent the day in Nuremberg beside the Nazi trials. It was a nice place. <laughs> it is a pretty place. And Jordan's here from Brisbane, Australia. Hi, Ann. How are you doing? It's 24 Celsius. That's got to be in the mid-70s. Fantastic day. Uh, thank you uh, for all your wishes. I know you've been sending me birthday wishes all weekend for the channel. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And I'm glad you're back and I'm glad you're with us today. Richard C. from Philly is here. Heavy rain, uh, three inches in about an hour, flooding everywhere. Oh, man, it's been happening in New York. It's happened in Toronto. The last week has been crazy for flash flooding everywhere. It's silly, just silly. Paul Wilson is here. Howdy, everyone. It's time. Uh, Time for trucking with Bruce. Paul is in the truck riding and listening to me on the road. But welcome, buddy. Thank you, sir. Uh, Paul uh, Paul Wilson. Oh, sorry. Traveling with Bruce. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Not trucking with Bruce. I'm traveling with Bruce. <laughs> sea Keeper. Hi, Bruce. And all 86 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Cloudy. Uh, 13 nights before I sail, before he's going on the uh, Norwegian cruise getaway. Thumbs ups, everybody. Three drinks offered. Yes, but at what price in the end? It's all a big numbers game, isn't it? I agree, sir. Brittany Lockwood is here. Hi, Bruce and all from uh, in Baton Rouge. It's 95. And uh, uh, in Thibodeau, uh, Missouri, it's 93. I'll be leaving on Friday morning and going to college in Thibodeau. I may give the temperature for both for the next few days just to let you know how hot it is. Thank you, Brittany, and good travels to you on Friday to go to school. Robert Grant, very well, and Jordan, we will get off the ship in Budapest. Uh, we're extending our trip five days to Phuket, Thailand, to satisfy two 16-year-olds and their plea. <laughs> it's out of vacation altogether. Well, it looks like you've extended the trip. They're flying to, Thai, uh, to Thailand from Germany. My gosh, that's going to be something uh, from Budapest. That's awesome, man. I, I think that's great. Paul Wilson, hello, Ann. How is it across the seas? I'm here in the U.S., um, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ann Jordan morning, Brittany, uh, uh, sea keeper. I'm traveling solo next cruise and I don't drink alone. Drinking is a social thing with me. The soda package will work for me this time around cruise number 39 and counting ready to go. Sea keeper. This is going to be awesome stuff. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Paul Wilson's asking Robert, which river cruise are y'all on and where, um, we got here, uh, 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 Brittany saying, my mom and I will set sail on Disney Fantasy on January the 5th, and it'll have a Star Wars day at sea while we're on board. That's going to be great. Uh, it'll be the second cruise for both of us. You couldn't pick the better line. Uh, Brittany, you and your mom going on the Disney cruise. Oh, oh yeah, you guys are going to have a blast. Fantastic. Um, let's see here. Right, Robert uh, saying, I'm on the Viking longship Modi. It, it, it's called their Grand European Experience or something like that. Fantastic. Paul Willis. Hi, Bruce and all. It's 80 with very little humidity here in Virginia. The weather we've been having for most of the July and August is more like September and October weather. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. Um, let's see. Robert uh, saying to me, uh, always my pleasure. Uh, I hope you know, as I hope you know. Thank you so much again for your contribution, my friend. Well, Paul Wilson, everyone, I'm a long haul truck driver uh, driving right now. And that's why I was joking saying trucking with Bruce. <laughs> It's all good, Paul. We know uh, you follow us on the road all the time, and I love it. I think it's great. Tom Henry, hi, everybody. 84 Fahrenheit and nice today in Richmond. Just picked up Penny at the groomers. Uh, she had a bath and the works. We'll be driving. Fantastic. Uh, Renee's here. Uh, hi, Bruce and all. 87 here. San Diego, uh, 83 at the coast. Five days till my Tahiti cruise. Five days. Can you stand it? That's awesome. Brittany Lockwood, we decided not to go in December because the week sailing 
uh, the week after will be over Christmas and we want to be home. We also want to be home for the New Year's. Of course, you pick the work the week that works for you. I get it, Brittany. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Debbie Manuel. Hello, Bruce and everyone. Homesick today, so at least work won't get in the way of traveling with Bruce. Uh, 95 for the high forecast with wind, so trying to get rid of the air, all the smoke in Northern California. Hey, Debbie, it's unbelievable. Uh, we've got the smoke, too. It gets in the eyes. Uh, we're using moisturizer, eye drops all the time to keep the eyes moist. It's just crazy. Stay uh, well, uh, rest, get better, enjoy the show, and thank you for your contribution. I love it. Uh, all right, Paul, Robert Brandt, uh, uh, I drive two miles to St. Thomas, and I want to shoot somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I drive two hours, 20 minutes to get to my nearest Costco. This guy drives two minutes. He's had enough. Unbelievable. Robert Brent, though, he's saying that's the greatest T-shirt you make. That's, this is the best T-shirt that you have for traveling with Bruce. There's something about this T-shirt that Robert Brent, who's from St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands, there's something about it he likes. I don't know what it is, but there's something about this T-shirt that Robert Brent really likes. And, uh, well, I kind of know. Uh, West 96 here in New Braunfels, Texas. Yesterday we received some well-deserved rain. Good stuff, Wes. If it's hot, uh, that's one thing, but at least you got some rain to keep the dust down. Way to go, buddy. Welcome to the show. Um, Tommy Ray or Tammy Ray. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, <clears throat> um, my sinuses have been messed up from these, from these forest fires. Uh, and she's out in Ontario way out there. Unbelievable. Man, that's crazy. Um, uh, Tom Henry, Brittany, what costume will you wear for the Star Wars uh, show? What, which one are you going to get? Uh, <laughs> uh, man, Brittany Lockwood. <clears throat> uh, she says it's the second year anniversary of the Baton Rouge flooding. We don't want to have those anymore. I agree. Uh, Ed Tolson Jr. Hey, Bruce. And all mid 70s and rainy here in the Bronx. Happy one year anniversary. Thank you, Ed. Uh, mid 70s is okay. Tolerable for the Bronx for sure. Nurse Nancy, hi there. Hi, Nurse Nancy. How you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. Seakeeper, how's your Costco haul? It's nice to see a bit of Mrs. Bruce. Uh, well, the Costco haul worked out. We brought back some, uh, you know, some milk and some eggs and uh, ice cream. Got the Costco, uh, the premium ice cream. Got to have that. That's the number one reason we went. And a few other little things, uh, just house stuff, you know, for the kitchen and, uh, you know, nibbles and stuff. Nothing illegal. Uh, didn't bring in back any alcohol this time. We didn't want to get caught with that nonsense. They were asking, did you bring any alcohol? No, not today. <laughs> any cigarettes? No, don't smoke. These custom guys. Oh, man. Picky. Susie Junko is here. Hi, Susie. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Brittany Lockwood. Tom Henry, I, I am not a huge Star Wars fan. Neither is my mom. But I'm sure we will dress up for, for pirate night. We'll get <laughs> That'll be great. <laughs> That's fantastic. Silo, Steve. Hey, Bruce. Hey, Silo. Welcome. Uh, Debbie uh, Emmanuel uh, Sabote is here. Hi, Anne. Uh, happy anniversary, Bruce. Hey, Emmanuel. How you doing out there? Welcome to the show from way over there in Africa. And Jordan Morning, Debbie. Hope you're feeling better soon. Robert Grant, my son smell like smoke. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Debbie Manuel, thank you uh, as well, Ann. Um, let's see here. Um, everyone's wishing Debbie uh, to get better real soon. Uh, Wendy Thompson, 82 here in Ocala. Sunny, hi, everybody. Deb, Ann, Paul, everybody. Robert, uh, let's see. I'm going through all the highs, all the hellos. I was trying to catch up with you guys. Uh, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, my oldest son said it's 622 US dollars in St. Thomas. Is that gas? Uh, I'm not sure if gas is that expensive in St. Thomas. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. New Sna Nurse Nancy, Southwest Wisconsin, high of 86 degrees. Gas is 283 gallon. Bad, cheaper than we are out here for sure. Uh, Paul Wilgus, Robert Grant. Wow. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, sea Keeper, some days trying to find the topic and conversation going in one direction is similar to hurting cats. It's fun to watch you hurting efforts. You're hurting efforts. Oh, I'm bad. <laughs> yeah, well, you see me working. I'm working here. I got I got 50 people watching me live, and I'm working the night. I love it. I just love it. I'm glad you guys are here. Tell your friends to join in. Let's get it up to 100. Uh, this is fantastic. Maurice is here. Hello, Bruce. Six more days till I cruise Norwegian Escape. I got people going on cruises all over the place. And if any of you folks can join me live while on your cruise, that would be fantastic. Talk to me about what's going on on your cruises and how your ships are doing and everything else. I love it. Carla Miller. Hi, Bruce. Rainy and 79 degrees in Arlington, Texas. Gas is 237 at Sam's Club. 237, Carla. Don't you move from Arlington. My goodness, that's a good deal. You can travel from Arlington, but just keep coming back. What a deal in Arlington, Texas, Two thirty-seven a gallon. It sounds to me like you make the stuff. It's like it's all around you. We make it here in Canada. You know, We have tons of it up here, but, oh, we tax the bejesus out of it so that we can raise more money. It's kooky. Um, I'm being good, Robert is saying, and I noticed that. <laughs> 
Paul Welgas, uh, yes, you are. You haven't mentioned that color. Uh, laugh out loud. Um, uh, Robert Brand wants to be a YouTuber, but YouTube, I don't think, uh, agrees. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, no comment. Uh, AJ Walsh, 319 a gallon yesterday in Las Vegas. Wow, that's crazy for Vegas. Uh, normally, Vegas has cheap gas or cheaper gas. It's not as cheap as Utah, but it's not that high usually. That is interesting. Uh, uh, Debbie Manuel, thumbs up. Bruce, you are welcome from me to you. Thank you so much, darling. You wonderful. Just absolutely wonderful. Can't wait. Uh, yeah, uh, Richard C is saying, Debbie, way to go for giving Bruce a donation. That, that's awesome. I love her. But Paul Wilga said, Robert Brandt, somehow, for some reason, I tend to agree with YouTube. <laughs> and Jordan, thumbs ups. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, uh, Robert Brandt, my sponsor would be Depends because everyone would pee there. <laughs> And he stops the message right there. Oh, my goodness. Um, uh, Tammy Ray is saying, you know what? I'm going to have to watch that video that video again about that, that ferry crossing you did about the no engine. Never realized there wasn't an engine. Well, that's the title of the video. you got to watch that video again to see how they do that. It's really cool. There's no motor. It comes across each direction without an engine. It's just incredible. I love it. I love it. Um, let's see. Uh, Robert Brandt, and people wonder why the twins are a handful. Look at that. Uh, yeah, Tracy Donald tried it. Robert Brandt doesn't seem to be going through. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Robert, Robert, Robert. Let me go through. Let me go through. Silo Steve watched uh, an ad last night for Southern Rock Cruise, uh, for the Southern Rock Cruise, January the 6th to 12th, 2019, on the NCL Pearl. Remaining, um, uh, oh, oh, they've got they've got Leonard Skinner, the, the remain the guys who are still alive, uh, Dickie Betts, Molly Hatchet, Marshall Tucker Band, uh, over 45 performances. Looks like fun. Yeah, it looks like a nice, calm, quiet, relaxing cruise with the guys from Leonard Skinner and Molly Hatchet. It should be just a super good time. <laughs> Watch that, folks. Any of you want to go on a relaxing cruise with your children that are four and seven years old, I don't know if this is the cruise you want to be on. Not necessarily the Pearl. Uh, be careful. Oh, my goodness. Um, Robert Brent, someone is promoting you, uh, Bruce. Uh, fantastic. Um, Silo Singh, that could be a fun cruise. Uh, Sylvia, hello, everybody. Uh, Sylvia here from Greensboro, North Carolina, 83 degrees. Feels like 91. Oh, my gosh. MG Toe, Silo, that does look good. When? What is the price for a balcony cabin on that cruise? Good luck, you guys. Maurice, uh, who decides when a ship goes into dry dock? What stays and what goes? Who decides? Well, it's the cruise line, the marketing department, the bean counters. It's, an, it's a team effort. Um, the cruise line is constantly trying to figure out where the money is coming from, uh, which bar makes us the most money, what casino promotion works best with the casino players, what entertainment in what bar plays out. Like the, when we have that seven-piece jazz band over there, and then we have that karaoke thing over here, and we've got the, the three-piece uh, rock and roll guys over here or whatever they are, who brings in the most money for every hour they're playing, and how much does it cost us? They're doing the analysis. The bean counters are figuring it out down to the penny, if not a fraction of a penny, and that decides what happens. And so, sure, after five years, every cabin is going to need a new mattress or uh, new televisions or new flooring, maybe new carpeting in all the cabins. Uh, maybe it's time to uh, take the, the high-end cabins at the top of the ship, strip them down right down to the nuts and bolts, and put in new everything because these folks are paying 500 a night, 800 a night you know, whatever, let's make them really posh. And we'll just do some cosmetic work on the lower cabins. It's all decided years in advance during the time the ship is at sea. They've got people on board all the time from head office on these ships. They may have a, uh, they may have on a, a casino director, like the head of the casino department for the whole cruise line. He'll spend two nights on, uh, on a NCL cruise ship from between Jamaica and Cayman. And uh, he'll be on that ship for that, checking out the casino and the staff and how they operate and the, the condition of the slots. They already know the numbers. The numbers are sent to head office. They got the numbers. He's just looking at the cosmetics of the place, and he's got a report. He gets off the ship in, in Cayman, uh, spends a night in the hotel in Cayman Isles. The next day, another uh, cruise line, another ship arrives from Norwegian. He gets on that one, and he takes that ship over to Cozumel, and he's – he or she, uh, or two or three of them, whoever, however many there are, 
are doing the same thing there. They get off the ship in Cozumel, spend the night. The next day, guess what? The third Norwegian ship is coming in that was just in Belize yesterday. It stops in Cozumel. It's heading back to Miami. You get on that one and they check the, ca the casino on that one. And then they head over. That's just the casino department. We got the room department, the hotel department. We've got the restaurant department, the guys downstairs, the crew uh, quarters. They got people for that. The entertainers, they're watching the entertainers on stage. The entertainers do not know that there are people in the audience from head office, from the entertainment hiring division who are making report cards on the dancers, the singers, the ones that are on the ship all the time, making sure that they are performing up to standard because by the time those folks get back on their, their contract, they've got a report card on how they've been doing. They've been watched 15 times in the eight months they've been on board or the six months they've been on, whatever the number is. Uh, that's what's going on. Personnel's being replaced. Uh, hard stuff like uh, like uh, like counters and sinks and dishwashers and televisions and mattresses, all being replaced in dry dock. That's all decided a year before the ship goes into dry dock. In the last three months, it's the last of the decisions. What's going to get painted? What's going to get sandblasted on the outside of the hull? Any engines have to be upgraded. How's the rudders working? The azipods, all that stuff. The engineering department. It's a big deal, and it's three million bucks a day in dry dock for every day it's in there. Otherwise, what are you bringing in the dry dock for? You're wasting your time. Get that thing refurbished, and now, so if it's in there for 20 days, 60 million. It's in there for a month, 90 million. That's real cash, baby. Better be done right. That's what happens. That's how it's done, Maurice. Robert Brandt, I'm more or less retired. Uh, I, I'm in for any cruise anywhere, but but not fond of ice. <laughs> area ice as in like north uh, alaska yeah i hear you there uh icebergs tammy ray's wondering <laughs> mg though saying robert stay on board and enjoy the ship don't go off the board um i'm not a cold weather guy he's saying uh, so alaska you're, you're not gonna see me on an alaska cruise uh ice and ice in the ice drinks question mark cabins are more than normal like silo is saying cabins are more than normal to be expected haven is more than normal wonder if some of the bigger acts stay in the haven some of the bigger acts, well, some of the higher end uh, performers, I don't know. Um, I doubt it. I think they would just be in regular balcony cabins. I know that uh, uh, a friend of mine had a son of his uh, as a dancer on board, and uh, he would tell his dad that, uh, you know, they would bring a singer on for like a one week on this ship, and then he'd spend a week on another ship, and he'd be in a, this, this entertainer was getting like $2,000 a week to perform, and part of the contract, they put him in a balcony cabin every time. And so, the booking department, the reservation department, always had a cabin for staff, crew, certain crew entertainers, and this guy always had a balcony cabin, part of his deal. Not uh, unnormal at all. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> MG Toe MG to saying, Robert, during the summer, the U.S. Alaska is warmer than Southern California. Uh, it's not going to work for him. Rob Souders here. Afternoon, Bruce, stuck in Washington, Delaware. Sorry. Afternoon, Bruce, stuck in Wilmington, Delaware. These glasses, there's something wrong with these Costco glasses, uh, or it's my reading. Uh, back, uh, what's this? Back hall got canceled till tomorrow, so I get to watch the whole show. You're in trouble now. Oh, Rob, I'm in big trouble. You're watching the whole show. Comments are going to be coming fast and furious. Uh, Tammy Ray, Robert Brandt, I'm from Canada. I was surprised when uh, out on, on Alaska cruise, we were wearing shorts, and we found it really hot and humid. Well, there you go. There are days. I mean, you know, summer. Um, <laughs> MG, Robert Brandt's going, MG, is that true that it could be hotter in Alaska than in California? In the, I'll have to check this out. I mean, are you, are you sure? Uh, we'll see. Um, <laughs> Silo, Southern Rock Music, one word, sorry, can't hi, I can't type web address. It's okay, uh, Silo. Uh, we, get, we know what you're saying out there with that big cruise. MG, what I've noticed is that the tribute band sh uh, should uh, sound a lot better than the real deal. <laughs> who are a lot older and have lost their voices. Yeah, well, yeah. You remember when they were in their 20s, they were screaming their heads off. Well, now you got the cover bands who are, you know, or this, or these, it's the, the band has got the same name, but it's only got like two guys left from the eight that started the band in 65. There's only two guys left alive. The other six guys are all 20 somethings, 30 somethings. They're doing the lead vocals. <laughs> yeah, because they can scream out yeah, for sure. That makes sense. Oh, uh, Robert Brandt, the twins are watching, Bruce. They're watching you right now. How you doing, guys? What's going on? I don't know what you find fascinating about this old guy talking to a computer in his living room, but I welcome you to the show, and I hope you're enjoying it. 
but maybe that's telling me just how bored you are on the ship you're on tonight. I, I don't know. I'm just saying. Welcome to the show, guys. Silo Steve. Hey, Tammy. When I was on the Bliss in Alaska, I was in shorts 100% of the time and came home with an a, almost a sunburn. It surprised me. Well, how about that? The sun reflecting off the water anywhere can get you. It's crazy. Um, uh, Bruce uh, Robert saying, please say hello to my sons. Watch how he murders these names. Oh, no. Uh, I'm going to murder these names. Well, it looks like Kaya, K-A-Y-A, -A, Kaya, and, and J-A-N-O, Janu, Kaya and Janu. Is that how you pronounce that? You guys tell me how to pronounce your names. Uh, uh, I'm sure I've blown it. But uh, if I have, I've, uh, I apologize. But I'm just reading what I see. I, I'm doing like, like it. Robert, you're killing me. You're just killing me, buddy. Maurice, uh, going on the Celebrity Edge on January the 13th, and then when I get off, I'm going on the Allure of the Seas. Do you think I should print out the forms for both? Should I print out the forms for both? Well, what forms are art thou referring to, sir? Uh, if it's the uh, if it's the you know your your booking information, yeah. If it's your uh, custom stuff, yeah. What? Uh, yeah, whatever you need to print off, you better print it off and take it with you. Uh, Paul Wilkes, I'm laughing my ass off. He said, um, uh, "Wendy, hi kids. Um, uh, Tammy, uh, yes, I was very surprised too." Pack too warm for August for sure. A silo, standard balcony on the rock, a roll, the rock and roll cruise, twenty three ninety nine, and it's out of Tampa. Twenty four hundred bucks to see these guys. Whoa, Peter Heckema, Bruce. I think the exception is eight hundred dollars if you're over twenty four hours. This is coming into the United States as an American. The difference in the two customs officers are the Canadian wants to know what you brought, and the U.S. officer wants to know who you are. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, that's exactly what it is. I, I, I agree. I think that's right. Um, I, that's a really good point, Peter. Yeah. Uh, Brittany, $800 Canadian worth of stuff. Americans can bring back to the States duty-free. Unbelievable. Uh, I wish we had that deal. It's crazy. We, I have to stay a week. I have to stay a full week in the U.S. to once a year, I can bring back 800 bucks worth of stuff for the family. Okay. So if Jennifer and I are in the car, it's not 800 for me and 800 for her. It's the family. Now, if she drove a car and I drove a car, it's 800 each, right? It's bunk. Just total BS. I just hate it. Robert Brandt uh, must be, uh, he must, he must be. <laughs> Robert is saying, uh, maybe I had a bunch of U.S. postage stamps on me. No, no, I, I don't think like that. Maurice Ingram, Bruce, did you see? The Lolita Loco video um, on should you take your passport off the ship? What's your opinion of it? I have not seen the video. I saw that. I saw the title today. I know he posted it. Um, I've talked about this before on, on my show here uh, live a few times because I've been asked a few times about it. Um, I would say this. Uh, if you're in St. Thomas, um, you're not going to need a passport um, if you're American. <laughs> but I would suggest this. Uh, if you're going on a on a on a uh, a shore excursion, and say you're in the Mediterranean, and you're going on a shore excursion to say Rome from the from the port, which is what 80 kilometers outside of Rome, and you're you're taking the train on your own, you know, group of you, bunch of you, or you're on a group a group cruise uh, like a group tour, ship ship sponsored, you paid the ship for a tour, and you're on the bus, and you're going. I would take the passport with me. I'd do it, um, <clears throat> and I'll tell you why. I'm not afraid of not, of getting back to the ship on time. I'm not. If I'm on the I'm on a tour with say Norwegian, which I've done, my daughter and I were on a eight hour deal, and it was fantastic, uh, worry free. I, it was worth the money for me. It, it the, the stress relief alone was worth it to me because my daughter and I, I didn't have to worry about this. It was going to be all right. But you're you're in the, the Colosseum, all right, and uh, you're looking around at the sites, okay, and uh, uh, beside you, like, you know, five feet away from you, uh, a pickpocket tries to pick the pocket of a tourist. And there's a melee, all right? And the cops are called and security. And all of a sudden, security doesn't know who's the good guy, who's the bad guy. And they just they just stop 20 people and don't let anyone leave. And you're one of them. You're now, you're now caught in something you had nothing to do with. You don't know what the hell's going on. They want to know who you are. And if you're with a cruise uh, and you've got your passport with you, boy, that's legit. That's legit. You can prove your identity, and the the uh, the officers, the security people, they will quickly figure out. Well, you know, there's uh, certain people pointing at these guys who are pickpocketing them, 
And, uh, uh, you know, they can quickly figure out, well, okay, we've got, you know, 20 people here, 10 are, are with a Norwegian cruise line cruise, because we've got our little Norwegian cruise line button for the tour. We've got our passport IDs. The ship can verify who we are. Uh, so we're not, we're no longer like prime suspects, theoretically, although uh, there, maybe we're professional pickpockets on a tour. Kind of ridiculous. Uh, but they're going to figure out, oh, yeah, we got three guys here who are locals. Three Romans from Rome. Uh, uh, what are you doing here? Uh, <laughs> did you come here for the, the Colosseum today? Uh, the cameras, they'll just look at the security cameras and they'll quickly figure out that these, uh, these three, uh, they're here all the time, every day. And they'll talk to the local constable, the local cops and go, we've arrested these guys five times in the last five years. They're professional thieves. And uh, with your passport, that comes in awful handy for a legitimate thing. This has nothing to do with getting stranded. Nothing to do with uh, uh, you got ill, uh, you had a heart attack, you got a stroke, uh, you broke your leg on the stairway uh, on a tour in Venice or in in in, in Barcelona or or in uh, anywhere. I mean, this is a totally different reasoning. I'd have it. I would have it for sure. And it's in the Caribbean too. Uh, even the Cayman Islands. Uh, I used to live there. Love the Caymans. Uh, but boy, are they sticklers for paperwork. Oh, yeah, they want to know who's on my island. Who are you? And if you get stranded on the Caymans, you better have your passport. It just makes life so much simpler. It really does. So that's my opinion on that. I hope I answered your question. Desi from Chicago. Desi, hi, Bruce and all. 85 and partly hazy in Chicagoland. We're getting haze from the West Coast fires. You are, and I'm sorry to say it. You're getting it from California, from British Columbia, from Washington State. It's all over the place. Yeah, it's awful. Uh, welcome to the show, though. Brittany Lockwood, uh, that might be your story. Okay, Robert Brent. Um, what's this? Uh, for uh, <laughs> I have the wrong completion to run for a political position in D.C. I, I don't know what he means by that. Uh, everyone's saying hi to Desi Seakeeper. Uh, I once went for a Sunday drive from Montreal to Plattsburgh, New York. When I got to Canada Customs, they asked if I had bought something. I answered a pack of Juicy Fruit gum. They searched the car. Yeah, because they can't believe it. What do you mean? You only bought one pack of Juicy Fruit Gum. You smart aleck, you. We're going to we're gonna search your car. We're going to find that bottle of booze. We're going to find the package of smokes. We're going to make a liar out of you, and we're going to nail you because you didn't declare it. Now we're going to nail you with a fine and duties and taxes. Uh, you found nothing. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, that's what Canada Customs, to me, is becoming. They're tax collectors. And they don't care who you are. They care what you got with you. It's ridiculous. I don't like it. Uh, Robert Brent, I would vote for you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Richard C. Uh, Maurice, uh, seeing the Maurice, R R Sharon at C says, when you visit Cuba, they will take your U.S. passport when you get off the ship. No way. I will go to Cuba and, and give up my passport. There's no way I'm going to do that. Yeah, they want you to come. They want you to get off the island, too. They don't want you to stay. Uh, and that's how they know who's still here. Who's still here? We got five passports. The ship's gone. Uh, gee, I wonder who these guys are. Well, we know who's still here. Yep. Uh, it's a very effective way of doing it, but you got to ask yourself, do you want to give up your passport uh, to hand it to someone for a while? I don't particularly like that either. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Brittany uh, saying hi. Let's see. Robert, I just want to get through these comments. Bruce, I, uh, Paul Wilson, Bruce, I refuse to cross the border in a semi truck. Last time there was uh, the la uh, la last time there was nine one one. Just just got back into the U.S. Uh, just before they closed the border with one, within one hour. Oh man, uh, yeah, you get, uh, I had my I had my nine eleven experience. I don't ever want to go through that again. That was a nightmare. <clears throat> uh, Balan is here. Hi, Bruce and all from Argentina. How you doing, Balan? Nice to have you here. Paul Wilson, trivia for everyone. I have a trailer of monkey pickles. I have a trailer of monkey pickles. How about that? Robert Brandt, um, uh, what's this? Is planning to run for government, uh, governor of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Move here so you can vote for me. <laughs> I want to run for governor in the U.S. Virgin Islands. How about that? Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Tammy Ray, Calgary's where I live. Tammy, you're in Calgary. That's why you're getting the smoke. You're not in Toronto. Thank you for correcting me. I keep forgetting. Thank you so much. I will be in Calgary this Wednesday. I will not be on the air this Wednesday. You just reminded me. I will not be on the air. This Wednesday, I'm going to Calgary. Uh, thank you for that. So I'm on tomorrow for two shows. Nina, hi, Bruce and all. Uh, from a still pouring Sweden, much needed. Oh, I'm glad you're getting rain in Sweden, Nina. You need it. You need the cool temperatures. You need the water. I'm glad that's happening. I hope Europe gets some rain. Man, it could use it. And Jordan, Ola Valen. Robert Brandt. Oh, traveling with Bruce. The Rising Sun. The huge private yacht on your shirt. 
was owned by Larry Ellison, but is now owned by David Geffen. She's 453 feet long. That's this guy right here. Okay, can you see that there? Okay, this is the big ship here. That is the Explorer of the Seas. And this ship right here is a private yacht, 453 feet long. And it's now owned by David Geffen. Wow. That's awesome stuff. Uh, wow. Cool. Nurse Nancy MG Toe. Yeah, I will try to get on as many cruise topic live stream as possible. Love planning and talking about cruises. Fantastic, Nurse Nancy. I'm glad you're here. Robert Grant, that was uh, that was sadly glass. Likely gas. Likely premium, but uh, but gas per gallon. Uh, expensive stuff. Um, Tammy Ray saying, 49 watching and 21 thumbs ups. Let's match the watching now numbers. Wouldn't that be great? Um, Brittany Lockwood, I'm very busy this week with packing. I've got to go to college, so I'm not sure how much I will be on the chat. I may or may not be at all on Thursday as I have some things I need to do. Brittany, it's okay. You can't chat with me Wednesday. I'm not going to be on the air. So you got a day off right there. Pack everything on Wednesday, and you get to go Thursday when I'm back on the air. It's all good. Tom Henry, uh, let's see. Um, uh, uh, MT Facebook Latitudes admin. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, had a live stream of the escape leaving New York last night. Very nice. Even mentioned Adrian the Hitman. So, so, so some kind of a live stream was on Facebook. Thomas saying, uh, and uh, they talked about Adrian the Hitman. Uh, Robert Brandt, do we know what ship Adrian will be on for spring break 2019? I'm ready to send uh, send some fun people his way. <laughs> yeah, you can have a ball with some of the folks you're going to send. Them. Oh my, Adrian. Oh my, Richard C. Salo Steve looks uh, like. Uh, Great. It looks like a great cruise on the Pearl. Too bad we already booked a long one after that date. Um, uh, Paul, uh, Robert Brandt, uh, Paul Wilkins saying, Robert, please do send some characters over to Adrian. That should be fun. Tom Henry, laugh out loud. He had one person support Adrian who was an admin, admin from another group. My moderator friend said, let's, let's kick him out. <laughs> let's kick him out. <clears throat> oh, my uh, yeah, uh, Nurse Nancy says, Richard C., <clears throat> in Cuba, they take your visa for visiting Cuba, not your passport. They, they keep, you keep your passport. That's what she said. Well, that's interesting. Robert Brent, at Traveling with Bruce, my company gets a daily sales update of alcohol sales and where and ages, groups, etc. They know their demographics. Very interesting. AJ Walsh, uh, Bruce, um, this is, of course, talking about the cruises, the cruise ships putting in dry dock, you know, what bars are we going to redo and all that? What numbers, who sells the most booze? Robert's saying they know exactly every bar, exactly how much booze they're selling, the, which bar is outperforming the other and why they got the answers. They'll make adjustments. AJ Walsh, Bruce, Carnival Horizon just canceled the Port of Amber Cove stop due to technical difficulties. Everyone gets a $50 onboard credit. Thank you, AJ, for that. Very interesting. Uh, I got to say uh, with Carnival, uh, they are very proactive when it comes to stuff like this. I have found uh you folks have commented on this from time to time whenever there's an issue with carnival they just right up and up go okay it's our fault we have a problem here give everybody a credit apologize to everybody we're really sorry uh you know we'll, we'll we'll do the best we can to make it better this is this is really good i i love this norwegian can't say the same about norwegian lately can we they're just not doing it on the pr department i don't know what's wrong there but there are issues robert brandt at paul wilgus just don't want him to weasel off to a different ship <laughs> you mean the Nazi, the, uh, the uh, yeah, the Adrian, yeah, oh my. Uh, we're having fun with Adrian on the uh, Bliss, the Norwegian Bliss, the uh, concierge. Those of you who don't know, Adrian is a concierge on the Norwegian Bliss right now in Se in uh, Seattle to Alaska. And Cruising with Wheels, another YouTube channel, they, they are sometimes on this show with me. They had problems with this guy. And others have had problems with this guy. And, uh, oh, people are talking about him everywhere. It's unbelievable. Anyway, interesting stuff. Tom Henry. Anyone else watch the new ship movie yesterday called Love at Sea? I haven't seen it. Uh, anyone watched it? Tell me, what did you like it? I think it was shot on the horizon of the seas, like like the movie last week, Like Father, with Kelsey Grammer and uh, Kirsten Bell. Uh, I, I did a video on that movie. Uh, kind of curious if anyone's seen that movie. Nurse Nancy at Brittany, a happy packing. Enjoy those college days. They can be tough, but also fun. Robert Brandt at Nurse Nancy, correct? Just the paper visa. That's all they need. And Jordan Tom Henry, is that on Netflix? Don't have Hallmark, the movie Love at Sea. Uh, let's see here. Um, is it on Netflix? Tammy wants to know. Tom Henry, Brittany, one of us has a Stormtrooper outfit. You should borrow that. <laughs> How about that? Um, why do you have a Stormtrooper? Never mind. Um, let's see. No, it's on Hallmark. The show's on Hallmark. We'll be on again next Saturday. And again on Sunday, that's the, where that movie is available to be seen. Nurse Nancy at Tammy Ray. Funny, I thought you really, really wanted to know right now. Love those kittens. 
Uh, Robert Brandt, my the wife wants a world cruise, and we'd love to spend all our time with Adrian. Wouldn't that be a fun world cruise with Adrian? Uh, Robert Brandt, sadly, that doesn't work. Uh, Paul Wilson, I was uh, talking about uh, about trailer load of bananas. Okay, Tommy Ray, Tammy Ray, he he is ten weeks and keeps hitting keys and shutting my computer down. Oh, Tammy's having a problem with a kitten or a putty cat, a little putty cat on her computer. Nurse Nancy at the Richard C. I just watched that one from Sharon at C. It's the visa they take. Don't worry about your passport being taken from my understanding. Robert Brandt at uh, Paul Wilgus uh, already have the twins visiting our friend and trying to add to. Okay, um, qu quit is as good as fired. Uh, quit is as good as fired, Robert Brandt says. Okay, um, let's see here. What's going on here? Uh, what about a dirty dance with Adrian? Laugh out loud. What is going on, Tommy? What's happening, Tommy? Tom, Tom Henry. Um, <laughs> Robert Brandt says, Ruth, I am amazed, but you said both names perfectly. I, I, you know, this is just caffeine free Diet Coke. There's nothing in here. There's, there, that's all there is. So I don't slur as the show goes on. I try to, you know, I try to keep it together. Cheers to all of you uh, out there in um, traveling with Bruce Land. Uh, thank you, Robert. I, I said it right. Thank God I didn't I didn't screw it up. Thank goodness for that. All right, everyone's saying hi. Smiles. Robert Brandt saw Lalita look a video. Here's my opinion. Get a passport and a passport card. He says. Uh, Robert Brandt says off the boat. Take the card. Uh, it's a, it's small like an ID. Okay, Robert Brandt. But your passport is locked away safe in your safe in your room. Richard C. At, uh, says at Nurse Nancy, yes, I just watched again. They only keep the visa. I'm bad, but visa is 75 bucks. Plus, you need a certified insurance policy. I think it's just too much too much of a pain to go there. I, I agree. As far as I'm concerned, if a country wants me to get a visa to visit the country, I'm not going. I, I'm not interested. I, I'm not paying you a tax to then be allowed to come to you and spend more of my money. No, I, I want you to give me something. Like welcome me with open arms with a Canadian passport or an American passport. You know what it, I think? I think it means if you have an American passport, Canadian passport, UK, German, French, Italian, you're from a G10 type country, G8 country. You ought to be welcome with open arms everywhere because you've got dough. You have access to cash. You're probably here to spend some money and enjoy yourself. I think this visa nonsense is a it's a tax. It's just a tax, and I don't go for it. I'm just not not interested. The Cuba thing, forget about it. I'm not interested. No way. Seakeeper, the border is about customs and immigration. Canadians are concerned about merchandise, customs. The U.S., it's concerned about bad hombres, immigration. Between the two of them, everything is covered. I agree. Uh, I, I, really, I prefer entering America than entering my own country. I really do. I'd rather enter the USA. Uh, professional. Uh, they're really good at their stuff. Uh, they treat you right. Uh, they're fair. Um, and uh, uh, Canada, you you have is playing the lottery in coming back to Canada. You're playing the lottery. You're gambling. What kind of moron am I getting today? Am I getting the fifty year old guy who's been around a while and has seen it all and is looking at a sixty two year old guy and kind of kind of you know we we know. Or am I going to get the 28-year-old punk who just started and, uh, oh, he's going to do his job? Or I'm getting the moron who's trying to get a promotion and to show off that he's super, super cop? Uh, which one am I getting? I don't know. I just I just shake my head at these people. Uh, and I'm paying for it. I'm paying these people out of my taxes for their service. I'm not happy. I'm not a happy customer. I'm not a happy customer. No, not a happy customer. Okay. Uh, and everyone's talking about the card to go traveling with. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Robert Brent, I commented on Jenny and Tony's site. Uh, Nurse Nancy Richard C., it is kind of scary. I'm not inclined to go there yet. I didn't mean to disagree, but I understood it differently. He's talking about Cuba. I, I'm not interested either. Uh, Jim Thomas, howdy, everyone. 102 in Anderson, California today. The knee is all right. Just need to exercise more. Fire here over 202,000 acres now, and this is the smaller of the two in California. The other one is over 300,000 acres. Unbelievable. Jim, I'm glad your knee is coming around. Uh, keep working it. I know it's hard, but do it. It's all worth it. You know it. I know it. Way to go, buddy. Uh, Robert saying, I love Cuba so far. Richard C., uh, Nurse Nancy, no, no good to go. I thought it was the passport. I will never hand that over to any government. Nurse Nancy, Robert Brandt, I saw your comment about the passport card. I'm too cheap to buy it, to buy both. I'm going to keep trying to figure out if the risk of theft is high or not. 
Um, let's see here. Uh, Robert Grant wants to know if MG Toe has been to Cuba. Last week, he said, last week, a group of tourists on an excursion bus were robbed and passports ta were taken as well. Uh, but where, MG, where is that? I made a small blurb on local TV in LA, but did not hit mainstream cruise blogs for some reason. Uh, MG, where, where? Uh, let's see here. Robert Grant, uh, he says he's been to, uh, Nurse Nancy wants to know if you've been to Cuba. He said, yes, I have. Uh, but I, I, again, I don't want to pay the extra money to go there. Just not interested. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Tom Henry, the NCL kept our passports on my April uh, transatlantic. Guess the, the, they, had them, they had them for all EU inspectors to review. Renee, some cruise lines will keep your passport, but a copy will work along with the cruise card. Richard C., Nurse Nancy got my passport card, only $35, but not good for Mexico and Canada. No place else. You can't board a plane with it either. MG Toe, not been to Cuba. From what I read, there's too much poverty and dangerous. I don't want to see poverty get robbed or be hustled. Robert Brandt, if your passport is approaching six months from expiration, they seem to look harder. Oh, absolutely. Uh, don't try and travel with a passport right near the last six months. Get a new one. It's ridiculous. Uh, even though you paid for it, it's just ridiculous. Um, Tom Henry, ever watch Bad Boys 2? Get great driving a Hummer through lots of shacks. Uh, you no, know, Tom, tell my stop. Um, <laughs> MG, in Europe, it's common for the hotels to take your passport for the night. That's true. Uh, Christine uh, Elkins. Hi, Bruce. Question. When flying into Canada, have you heard of any issues bringing a drone with you? From what I've read, you're allowed to carry on the airplane. Uh, Christine, I don't know the rules. They're changing like light speed. Um, I, I uh, would personally, if I did it, I would check out the, uh, the uh, information on the web, governmentofcanada.ca, I guess. Uh, and I would not try to bring a drone in my carry-on. I would probably have it in my suitcase, but uh, I don't know the rules. I know that in Canada, to fly a drone now is very restrictive. The federal rules were passed last year, and they're just unbelievably restrictive everywhere. You really want to look into this before bringing a drone into this country. Uh, it's changed dramatically in the last year. Robert Brandt, MG Toe, correct, many poor, and I didn't find crime myself, but the nation is in need of help. It's a beautiful place. Uh, let's see here, uh, Anne, uh, Jordan, uh, Renee, I have also been on cruises. Uh, we'll keep your passports till the end of the cruise. Uh, a, a passport copy is fine with your sale and sign card. Uh, MG Toe, the U.S. State Department says Cubans should not, Americans should not go to Cuba. Well, that's it, changed. Um, uh, things have changed in the last while. There's a lot more cruises getting permission to allow them to go to Cuba. So things are changing. Tony Barnett. Hey, Bruce, when we went to Cuba last year, they didn't keep our passports. We went through a, a, ter a thermal scan and had the passports reviewed and stamped. Interesting, sir. Very interesting. Thank you for that. And thank you for joining my channel today. And love your channel as always, buddy. It's great to have you. And thank you, Tony, for sending me a message uh, congratulating me on my channel's first birthday. I saw that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that very much. And all the best to you guys. Uh, Robert Brandt just got a paper slid under our door 40 percent off our viking off other viking ships i think that's a common discount it probably is robert you're gonna have to check online to compare a, an online price to this price well, nurse nancy he there at uh, tony barnett uh, uh, she's happy to to see him tony saying hey nancy tammy ray i will be on the carnival horizon this time next year get her fixed that's right tammy they better get her fixed and jordan also uh at tony barnett um i love awesome i love you uh, awesome we'll watch your video soon Say hi to Jenny for me. Tony Barnett. Carnival is great for at, at that. Talking about credits for uh, for uh, problems on Carnival ships. The propulsion system failed on our first cruise. They gave us a $100 uh, onboard credit, a 50% refund, and 50% off a future cruise. That's being proactive. That's doing it right. And that's how you get lifelong followers and cruisers on Carnival. There's a reason why Carnival is still in business after all these decades. People get addicted to this kind of service. Why not? What's wrong with that? Uh, can't uh, other cruise lines work like that? Some just don't. I don't know why. Tom Henry, Love at Sea was much better and a better promo for Royal Caribbean. Very interesting. Tony Barnett, hey, Ann, good morning. Robert Brandt at Traveling with Bruce. Well, cheers to the name pronunciation. Thank you, sir, for that. Wendy Thompson, <laughs> who has... Who has enough nerves to put up with Adrian for a world cruise? A world cruise with Adrian. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't think I can handle it. Nurse Nancy, uh, at Tammy Ray, uh, I sail on Horizon. I sail on Horizon three times next year. I'm going on three times. Hope all the kinks get worked out. Uh, I hope so, too. Beautiful new ship. Great amenities. Uh, great reviews. 
Guys, burgers, I mean, come on. Should be good. Hopefully that isn't a serious issue. Um, Tony uh, saying to me, we didn't have to have a certified insurance policy, but that was last year. Things may have changed. I don't know, sir. Robert Grant, gold hombres. I mean, bad hombres. <laughs> Is that the ones uh, in the U.S. paying no taxes? Bad hombres? Uh, yeah, the ones paying no taxes in the U.S. Robert Grant, I didn't, uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't want a finger, just a thought. I did. I'm not sure what's going on. Robert's having problems. Tony, I like the passport card, but you can't use it to board a plane. It's useless uh, for that. Robert Grant, no one gets in New York City, right? No one gets in NYC, right? Robert Grant, oh, 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 no one gets robbed in New York City, right? No one. Yeah, no one gets robbed in New York City. Of course not. It's the safest town in the world. Robert Grant, uh, uh, <laughs> Robert knows he's a pain in the you-know-what. Uh, just ask his wife after 31 years. He knows. Uh, Tony, uh, laughing out loud, Robert, I have, I have one working on sainthood also. <laughs> Robert Brent, uh, Tony Burnett, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Rini, my husband is working with the FAA and equivalents from other countries on unmanned aircraft standards and rules. Wow, unbelievable. Uh, Robert Brandt at Tony Barnett, uh, no common area, no common, common, uh, I can't figure out what that means. Uh, no comment. Robert Brandt saying no comment. Okay. <laughs> Robert Brandt, guy's burger with donkey sauce. Uh, Robert Brandt, donkey sauce. That's what it is, donkey sauce. That's what they have on board the carnival ships on the guys' burgers. Apparently, it's very good. I have not had one yet. I'm looking forward to one someday. I'd love to be on the horizon sometime. I'd uh, love to check out that class of ship for carnival. I think I'd enjoy it. Uh, this food sounds pretty darn good. Uh, it's kind of right up my alley. Uh, I'm a horrible typer, Robert is saying. I'm a terrible typer. Yeah, I hear you there. It's it's like shorthand. I <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man, you know, my topic for the day, uh, just to kind of get around to it, we've touched on it a little bit, is that um, six cruise lines right now, six cruise lines are offering a free drink package or a drink package with your cruise, depending on the kind of room you're booking. Uh, the cruise lines that are offering this drink package are um, Princess, uh, MSC, uh, Norwegian, uh, Ocean Oceania, Oceania, Celebrity, and Holland America. Um, and yet, uh, we are told by the industry, <clears throat> if you listen to <clears throat> you listen to any of these, um, the presidents of the cruise lines, or you read any of the marketing material from the PR departments from the cruise lines, they will have you believe that um, the numbers are up. Everything is up. A record number of tourists on uh, passengers on cruise ship. Record number. A uh, record number of advanced bookings into 2019. Absolutely off the charts. We're going to have more people on cruise ships next year than last year, than the year before, than the year before. It's just it's just growing. Uh, prices are higher. Onboard spending is higher. Everything is uppity, 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 up. If it's that good, if it's really that good, why are six cruise lines offering free drink packages on, on cruise ships? What I don't understand it. Uh, alcohol sales on cruise ships are probably the cornerstone of profits uh, for cruise lines. I mean, what they charge us for a cabin, generally speaking, an inside room, a, an ocean view, a basic balcony. These rooms here, uh, most of the time, are priced in such a way that the cruise line is kind of breaking even, losing a little, making a little. They're not getting rich off of charging us, say, you go on a one-week uh, Caribbean cruise in uh, November, and you're paying five seventy five dollars for a balcony for the basic seven-day cruise, forget the tips, forget the port charges, you're paying that, they're not making any money off us, not much, because they got to feed us breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They're offering the entertainment as part of the deal. They're paying the entertainers to entertain us. They're paying the guys in the bar to play for us. The comics in the comedy club, they're being paid a salary to perform. Um, where are they making their money from? Well, the casino is one. The bar around that ship is another. But if you're giving away drink packages as part of your promotion, uh, and that includes premium coffee or and or the soft drink packages as well, uh, where are they making their money? Um, photography, uh, onshore excursions. Um, 
you know, an $8 cocktail, uh, as Robert Brandt will tell you, an $8 cocktail pays for the bottle of booze right there. The rest of the bottle at 8 bucks a cocktail is just profits all the way. And if you're drinking on the pool deck, you've got four or five cocktails going after three or four hours of sun tanning and dipping in the pool and karaoke singing and everything else. They're making a fortune off of you. Four or five cocktails, 40 bucks in booze cost them a total of maybe $5 to serve you that. You're making them a bunch of money. Multiply that by 2,500 fellow passengers all over the ship all day long. Now we're going for dinner, bottles of wine. Now we're going for the uh, casino, drinks there. We're going to the entertainment, uh, watch the entertainment. Then we're coming out. We're heading to the lounge, the piano lounge, the whatever. The, that's just where the cruise lines make their money. It's on the alcohol. They're giving this away for free. They're cutting off their number one source of profits on the line. What's going on? Why are these cruise lines like Hall in America with their beautiful five-star ships? Why Celebrity with five, five-and-a-half-star quality ships? Oceana, six-star cruise line. Uh, Norwegian, five-star. Uh, MSC, five-star. Uh, and Princess, four-and-a-half, five-star. Why are these guys having to do this? Uh, what's up? Now, I don't see Royal Caribbean on this list. I don't see Cunard. Uh, I don't see... Um, who else don't I see? Viking. But then Viking, it includes alcohol on their on their cruise line when you're we you know they, you get it automatically it's built into the price viking can't lose they've got your two thousand two hundred dollars for the week for the caribbean cruise they got twenty two hundred bucks from you with a balcony nice and the drinks and the free wi-fi and this and that special dining everything it's all built in they still make a nice profit they don't have to give a discount on anything and they aren't and they're adding ships like crazy on viking why are these cruise lines over here having to give away a free drink package? We know we've heard the stories about MSC Seaside. You go on the MSC Seaside right now in the Caribbean, they're offering you a balcony for what, 600 bucks, 650 with a free drink package, including specialty coffee and soda for each passenger. Take the 650, you got to take 250 off the top. You might have to take 300 off the top because that's the package. If you normally buy the premium drink package at 60 a day, 70 a day times seven days, that's $400. So I'm actually underestimating the discount. If it's a 650 cabin with a $400 drink package, they're giving you the cabin for 250 bucks. Start drinking is what I say, and then take advantage of the deal, obviously. But uh, I wonder why this has to happen. It's got to be because the ships aren't filling up. They're not able to sell out the ship. Now, if I paid six months ago, I bought a, a, a cabin on the... Uh, MSC Seaside or on a princess ship or a Oceana or Celebrity, if I've already bought my cruise and I didn't get a drink package, I'm on the phone right now to my travel agent or the cruise line, vacationstogo.com, whoever I use to book it, and I'm getting that now that you owe me that. Retroactively, you give me that drink package or a discount or give me a room credit equal to the cost of a drink package because you're giving it to the passengers right now that are booking the cruise now. So I'd be on it for sure. Um, what are your thoughts? Why are they giving away free drinks on cruise lines like these cruise lines when the story says, um, well, the story goes that everything is great, that everything is uh, booming? Why are they doing it? Um, interesting. Um, <laughs> uh, Nurse Nancy says, Robert Brandt, your typing reminds me of how my mom's phone, our mom's phone picks up on her voice dictation. <laughs> It's like a mystery to try to figure it out. Robert Brandt, most of the typos are actually me. Some are autocorrect. He doesn't like it. Richard, uh, don't forget, Princess, they have uh, free booze going on now. See, Robert Brandt, my kids are laughing. Robert Brandt, hey, I'm 55. What do you want? I wasn't raised on all the tech they have. A little, you know what? <laughs> oh, my goodness. MG2 because they're lying. Uh, Robert Brandt, uh, Robert Brandt. Uh, uh, well, Paul Wilkes is saying, hey, Robert, they know you're typing all too well, and they, they, they don't try blaming it on your age. <laughs> Richard C., uh, MG Toe, time to book if you drink on board. Uh, Tom Henry, they can probably text during the, the fast thumb maneuver with less issues than I have on, with my stylist. Uh, the cruise companies are lying, MG Toe is saying. They're, they're lying. They're, they're saying it's all great, but maybe it's not. Robert Brandt, I'm tired. I, I'm tired. Dar I'm earned tired, at least in my mind. I'm real tired. MG Toe, that's why they are giving away all these freebies, MG is saying. Robert Souter, uh, Rob, these cruise line people lie worse than politicians. Uh, well, you know, they're putting on the spin. They're spin doctors. 
Uh, they're watching the White House uh, to see the spin there, and they're just doing it on their own. Um, you know, they talk about how the business is growing and that there's more bookings like next year than this year. Well, that's because there are more ships. They're just more cabins. And of course, there's more people cruising next year than this year. You've got more cabins you can sell out. The question is, are you getting more money per cabin, per passenger? Are you netting out more money at the end of the day? Uh, the reality, of course, is that you're putting a, a, a symphony of the seas on the ocean at $1.3 to build. Uh, that's a pretty serious investment uh, in the next 20, 25 years. Uh, you better get 6,000 people a week on that ship. Find out a way to do it. Well, right now, the Symphony of Seas doesn't need any help because it's brand new. It's got the cachet of brand newness. But you take a look at Hall of America, and you're trying to fill up the Ooster Dam right now. You're trying to fill up the Staten Dam. You're trying to fill up the Prinzen Dam. These are 10, 12, 15-year-old ships. Beautiful, but they're not the new kid on the block anymore, and they're up against a lot of competition. Hall of America has got to find a way. The first thing you do is lower the cost of the cabin. The second thing you do is offer freebies, and it might be 250 minutes of Wi-Fi. Maybe it's a free drink package. Maybe it's no tipping. Maybe there's a short excursion. Maybe you'll give a discount to specialty dining. You'll do whatever you've got to do to fill that ship up. you got to get them on board. The problem I find, if you get people on board and you can't sell them a drink because you're giving them a drink, where is your upside? I don't understand this, uh, this drink package thing. I don't understand why you would do that. The Rob uh, uh, is talking about that. Robert Brandt, uh, seven kids, three grandkids, and one hour, one hundred hour work weeks. Uh, I, I, I've earned, I've earned my, my, in my mind, I've earned it. <laughs> you certainly have, Robert. You have paid dearly, my friend. Oh my gosh, MG Toe. I got a call from Princess, telling me they have a new burger place that's just as good as Guys. Princess is owned by the same company that owns Carnival. It is Carnival. Uh, why are they uh, doing that? Well, they're trying to uh, drum up business. Keep in mind, though, the Princess Cruise Line, they have their own marketing department. Carnival has their own marketing department. Hall in America, they got their own marketing department. And they're under pressure, under their own little umbrellas, to perform. And so Princess will do whatever they have to do to get people to come on board. These cruises I've been telling you about all summer to Alaska out of Vancouver, British Columbia, the best deals all summer long. Princess cruise ships, more than one. There's like three or four cruises, cruise ships going up to Alaska out of Vancouver and Seattle. The deals have been fantastic all summer long. Very interesting. Uh, let's see here, MG Toe. These ships need passengers. Uh, Tom Henry, ask them to send some samples. <laughs> yeah, send me a sample of your burger. Uh, Paul Willis agrees with you, Robert. You have paid your dues. Robert, uh, uh, at Bruce uh, I have nicely lived off the booze people. Bye. <laughs> you betcha, buddy. Thank you, Paul Wilgus. Uh, Robert is saying, absolutely, you've earned every penny you've made, my friend. Uh, MG Toe, I got a call uh, from Carnival offering me 99 bucks, three or more, a three or four day cruise from my local port. $99. Wow, that is something. Uh, Richard C., yes, Cunard sent me an email for free drinks on selected cruises on Cunard. That's seven, seven cruise lines offering free drinks. Uh, Richard saying, jump on that deal, MG, jump on that deal. Uh, Peter Heckema, we have Nexus cards or global entry cards. A scan of our cards and a quick eye scan gets us by crowds in airports and seaports. Of course, it's coming into the US. We deal with a computer and not a border agent. Good for the USA and Canada. I agree. Uh, if I were a frequent traveler like that, I'd have that too. Robert Brandt, I don't discount uh, to the lines except based on volume. If they buy big time booze, they get a volume deal. Otherwise, no. Well done, sir. Uh, Tom Henry, I prefer the meal and port credit perks. Don't drink enough to cover the drink package. There you go. Yeah, I, I go for that myself. MG Toe, people should drink responsibly when it comes to booze. If you drink too much, you act like a fool and pickle your liver. Well, there, there you are. those of us who've been around a while, we know that. But try and tell that to the young who've never been drunk before or who just think it's a sport. It's a competition. Robert Brandt, MG Toe, I get 99 bucks for the best available, but I'm a premium vendor, so I'm sure they pass those along. Interesting. Uh, to Tony Barnett, I wonder since it's an easy lever to pull, since their cost isn't that high, they might be using it to capture new cruisers. It seems like loyalty programs really hook in people if you can get them on. Uh, so you know, once you've got them, you're just loyal. The loyalty points keep them coming back. 
and they get a little perk and another perk and another perk, the higher they get. Uh, but the first timer, you know, you want to get the first timer on the ship. Uh, Tony, I have to agree with you, except I got to say, if you're offering a free drink package to, you know, passengers, people, you know, marketing it, you now got to give it to everybody. And now that cruise may be a loser. You might find that that one week cruise is a, at best a break even cruise. On the other hand, Tony, you could be right. You know, once you got them on for the first week, they've had so much fun the first time. They're going to want to come back to that cruise line a second time, but it might not have a free drink package the next time you come on board. You never know. Tony goes on to say once maybe they have repeat customers. Very good point. Suzanne Hoffman, when a cruise company gives away drink packages, if you're a non-drinker, it is sometimes a good time to go on other sailings to find bargains that are not filling up so fast. Yeah, you know, if you're a non-drinker, do you want to be surrounded by a bunch of folks who are getting blots blitzed because they can? I don't know. Robert Brandt, a um, flawed individual, he's saying about himself, but a kind of guy, if you come to St. Thomas, probably like me, more cabins means more money, says the flawed guy. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, you know, Robert, you know, filling up a ship is filling up a ship. And, uh, you, you know, the cruise line is probably figuring, uh, they would give them a free drink package. They'll feel richer. They'll do the specialty dining. They'll feel richer. They'll gamble more in the casinos because they might be a little loose in the casino because they're a little loose overall because they've been lighting it up and they'll come to the casino and they'll drop 200 bucks without thinking about it because they are, they're not paying for the drinks. They're happy. That might be the strategy. I don't know. Debbie Manuel, they still added tax and gratuities on my free alcohol on the bliss, which was $89 a person per day. They made money off you, whether you actually drank any free alcohol or not. So you take the 18% gratuity on an $89 a day drink package that they are giving you. <laughs> <laughs> that is almost $18 a day in gratuity fees that they're collecting from a free deal they're giving you? Really? This is free? Uh, I'm paying you 18 bucks for a free drink package because I got to pay for the gratuity on a free what? Uh, yeah, 18 times seven days. That is, uh, what is that, 80 plus uh, 50, $136 a person. Uh, two people in the cabin, mandatory. Uh, so that's two hundred and seventy-two dollars a cabin minimum, uh, multiplied by how many cabins? Some freebie that is, huh? Now for you, the passenger. Okay, eighteen bucks is your cost all day. Premium coffee, soda, and drinks. Good deal. You know, I mean, you know, five colas for me. That's uh, fifteen bucks. Uh, a premium coffee in the morning, another four or five dollars. There's my 18 bucks. I, I don't even drink and I'm already breaking even. Jennifer, uh, Jennifer's laughing because Jennifer will, 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 will consume the equivalent of 50, 60 dollars at eight bucks a drink. Easily put 60 bucks uh, of booze in there with coffee and, and what have you. Uh, so that works. But uh, the cruise lines don't lose, lose. They don't really lose. Uh, like I said, 136 dollars for the week and they're giving you drinks that cost them 20 cents a drink to give you, 25 cents a drink to give you, drink all you want at 18 bucks a piece. We're still ahead. Do the, does the crew get the $18? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Uh, Nurse Nancy, I agree. Try to get people on board and then you have more business. MG Toe, if you drink on board, try to limit it to two or three drinks on board. Better yet, go to a bar in the port like Robert's uh, uh Robert tried to be a bar. Uh, yeah, go, go on board. Uh, go on the shore and hit the Margarita Bar, Margaritaville. Hit Hooters. Uh, hit up, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Fried Greek tomatoes. All the other bars on shore, and you'll get cheaper booze there. And try to drink less on shore on boat if you can. Not easily done. The Robert Brandt laughing out loud. Mg Toe. I uh, 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 let's see one bar restaurant in St. Thomas, and I never. I never name it. I do have sons now uh, who who own uh, some. I do mention MG. If you come to uh, and I'll comp you. If you come to St. Thomas, I'll get you comped on a on a on a on a short bar for sure. What a deal! You, it's just worth it visiting Robert for that, of course. Paul Wilgus at, at Debbie Manuel. Uh, when I went on the getaway, I had the free drink package, and they only charged me $119 service charge for the whole cruise. <laughs> well, still, you know, it might have been at. Uh, a lower rate, you know, they might have they might have charged you. Uh, they might have they might have called the 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 uh, the drink package a forty dollar deal, 
or a $60 deal and they charged you accordingly, maybe 15%, you know, whatever the commission. Uh, but you still paid a rubber brand. They can clone a new liver. Smirk, he's saying, Peter Heckemite, Bruce, Nexus or Global Entry Cards are good for entering Canada or the USA. Right on, sir. Thank you for that. You are correct. Uh, and it, it, if you're doing it often, it's a great idea. I agree. MG2, I'll remember that, Robert. I'll remember that. Robert Brandt, loyalty works a lot. My kids are now all grown up. So it's grandkids. Disney, send me um, any great offer. Disney, send me an offer. I got grandkids. Robert Brandt, offer remains open at MG2. Um, MG, it's just not the booze that's free, but they also give away dining and gratuities. Robert Brandt, you have to tip on the meals too. You do. Uh, Christine uh, is saying, uh, Bruce, uh, could they be offering free drinks just to get the ship full in order to get people traveling back to the Caribbean after the hurricanes last year to help stimulate the island's economies? Uh, Christine, that's another good another good question. Um, I'll, I'll answer it this way. Uh, th th this is not an uncommon thing for the cruise lines to do. Um, uh, they're not generally trying to help the Caribbean per se because it, it really doesn't need it because we have short, we, we have short memories. Um, we'll, we're talking about the hurricanes today, but a year from now, we won't be talking about them anymore. If they don't have another bad season this year, we won't mention it at all. We'll forget all about it and life will go back to normal. However, you're a cruise line and you're offering, um, three or four stops on a seven week, a seven day trip. Okay. If you're Royal Caribbean or your carnival or Disney, uh, but mainly uh, cruise lines offering free drinks right now. So Carnival, uh, Norwegian, you've got private uh, islands that you operate. So uh, you have a ship that can hold 3,000 passengers. You're at 2,500 booked now. You got 500 left to go, and you're putting out the free the freebies. You're starting to put out freebies to get people in, and you're topping that ship up. Okay, you top the ship up to 3,000 passengers. <clears throat> you now. You have four stops. Two of the stops are on private islands that you operate. The water slides, the zip lines, uh, the roller coasters, uh, all kinds of activities. You've got cabanas at the beach. You've got all these extras that you can sell or rent on board your private island. All 3,000 passengers are yours for the whole day. And you've got two stops out of four that they're going to stop at your spot. And they can do on-island on shopping at the shops that you own and operate under your banner. You got a captive market. So the free booze package brought in the final 500 and they're spending like crazy. So, yeah, that's what's going on. So it's kind of helping the economies down there for the other two stops. Yeah. But it's really helping the cruise line itself. Isn't that something? Rob Souter, I was going to get the pop package on our Royal Caribbean cruise. But paying 18% gratuity to a, a pop machine so I can get my own pop was a deal breaker. I told him I'll, I'll drink one. Yeah, I, I try to bring along cola myself on in my luggage. Uh, and hopefully I don't have to buy any. But I know I'll buy four or six drinks over a week on a cruise ship. I will end up doing it. It's just the, I, I just built that into my cost of enjoyment. But when I get off the cruise ship, Say I'm in uh, Puerto Vallarta. Uh, we'll cross the street to the shopping mall over here. We're heading to the Starbucks, and I'll get a coffee there. And uh, another hour or two of walking around, I'll grab a cola, a bottle of cola for 65 cents on shore. I'm drinking my Diet Coke there, and uh, I'm back on, on board the ship, and I've got my cans waiting for me in my fridge. If I have any left, then I'll continue on. So that's what I do. Um, Robert Brandt at MG Toe. It's pick up your pick up your food and drinks on land. Yeah, there you go. Uh, MG Toe, the gratuities alone pay for the cost of the booze and coffee. He's right. That's right. Tom Henry, at least there's no hidden tip cost on the port excursion credit. Yeah, isn't that something? Uh, Robert Brandt, it's all a math equation. Debbie Manuel, Paul Wilgus can, can watch the price change when booking the trip, depending if you take the free meals, $50 room credit, or drink package charged. The tax and tip up front. Uh, interesting how you can see that happen. And Jordan saying, what I don't get, Bruce, is why are they charging so much for the drink packages? A Royal Caribbean uh, doesn't give free drink packages? Well, from time to time, they may have a promotion. But uh, uh, it all depends on the cruise line and it all depends on the ship and the itinerary. 
So right now, Royal Caribbean, Harmony of the Seas, Symphony of the Seas, you can't really get a super deal on those ships right now because they're they're just booking naturally. They're just filling up because the two ships, one is what, six months old, three months old. The other one's a year and a half, two years old. They're doing well. However, if you take a look at vacationstogo.com and you type in uh, cruise deals for the allure of the seas or the oasis of the seas, uh, check those out. You'll find deals on those two cruise ships. The cabin prices have come down, but you might not find a free offer for drinks yet. They may not have to do that yet on the Royal Caribbean's to other Oasis class ships. Over here in Holland America or on uh, or on Celebrity, uh, on some of the Norwegian ships, the MSC, they have to give away drink packages to get you to book. That's what they have to do right now. Either that or they're offering specialty dining deals, ship ex uh, short excursions, internet deals, whatever it might be. Uh, with high-end cruise lines, like the Six Star Lines, uh, they don't really have the opportunity to give you any freebies because it's all inclusive, actually. Uh, like biking, uh, if you take the higher end cabin, everything's included, including drinks in your fridge. You're in your room. There's alcohol there. Take all you want. Enjoy. It's in, you've paid for it already. It's part of the cruise. We'll refill that fridge all day long if necessary. Go to the bar anywhere in the ship. Order whatever you want. Just show them your wristband or your room card. Drink is included. Now, if you're on Viking on the secondary cabin, it's a balcony cabin, but it's not the high end. You get free alcohol, uh, wine and beer, I believe, at least at lunch and dinner, automatically included. Uh, but if you want to buy alcohol, it's additional. Um, but they already give you free Wi-Fi. They give you the spa access pass. They already give you short excursions on Viking. Um, you know, what, what, what else can they give you for free? There isn't very much left. So these higher end lines, if they have pricing pressures, they actually have to reduce the cost of the trip. Now, what Viking does is a bit of a bit of a marketing gimmick. They'll say, uh, <clears throat> okay, if you book a seven-day Caribbean cruise with us that starts in San Juan, ends in San Juan, we'll give you an airfare deal for $199 anywhere in North America to, the, to uh, Puerto Rico and back. So instead of giving you a discount on the cruise, We'll give you an airfare credit deal. So if it normally runs you $500 round trip to fly into Puerto Rico and back, it only costs you $200. We'll take care of the rest. They'll negotiate the flight on your behalf because they have more buying power with the airline than you have. Uh, they'll try tricks like that rather than discount the cruise at, if at all possible. Okay, Interesting uh, tactics they can use. Uh, Robert Brandt, free drink packages cost uh, cost in many cabin categories as much as the cabin. Uh, that's true. Uh, if you if you're talking, you know, uh, eighty bucks a night, ninety dollars a day for a drink package, you can get a cabin for ninety bucks a day. That's what we're talking about. It's an unbelievable deal. Uh, Peter Heckema, sorry to mention this again, but Nexus or Global Entry gives you TSA pre-approval also, called. Fast pass card is only fifty bucks for five years. Best fifty we ever spent. I believe it, Peter. I believe it. It's uh, uh, when I was in the Caymans, I was in the brokerage business, uh, investment business. I was in the U.S. all the time, uh, traveling to Canada and back, and over to the Bahamas and back. Uh, and I had a Nexus card, handy, handy. I used it for a year and a half, two years. Very good. Um, if I were traveling a lot now, I'd have it myself for sure. The airports, absolutely. The airports. I agree. Um, uh, <laughs> and Bruce, uh, MG, do you get a discount if you're a friend of Bill W and don't drink, uh, Bill W at first, I don't know who Bill W is. Call me night. Uh, and don't drink. I don't know if you do a uh, Robert Grant. No, won't, won't, uh, uh, uh new, uh, don't want to turn this into another booze trivia. Oh, I'm not sure what it means. MG toe used to be most, most were inclusive. Then non drinker complained. Now you buy those. $5 coffees, $4 self-serve beer, and $3 chocolate milks, and you have kids with juices and sodas. Yikes, Robert Brandt, you aren't ahead. Robert Brandt, on this cruise, it's all been free, all been free, excursions, everything, uh, but it wasn't $399. No, the, uh, the cruise that Robert is on was not $399 per person uh, in the cabin. No, he's paying premium money, but you're getting top-notch food, top-notch service, inclusive everything, very good. Uh, Robert Brandt, Bill W. is the founder of American Airlines. Ah, thank you. 
<laughs> Thank you very much. Or is he a founder of Alcohol Anonymous, uh, which is with Wendy Thompson, Bill uh, W equals AA. Uh, is that Alcoholics Anonymous? Uh, Christine Elkins, Bruce, a little off topic, but have you had a bushwhacker in St. Thomas? Oh my God, yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, what is a bushwhacker in St. Thomas, please? Bill W is the founder of AA Robert Brand. No complaints, Bruce. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, let's see. Bushwhack. What's a bushwhacker in St. Thomas? You got to tell me. I'm. Uh, is that a, a certain drink? I'm not sure what it is. I'll tell you what I did get. I got. Uh, I got sideswiped in uh, in uh, uh, Saint Martin. Uh, Jennifer and I were uh, were uh, heading back to the cruise. We had. Uh, we were walking back to the cruise ship from downtown. Spent a wonderful time. Just people watching. And we came to a bar, and we went into a little a little bar, and we wanted to get a little refreshment. And uh, we were just hanging around, and it was a great atmosphere. And uh, Jennifer is enjoying a a little a little uh, red stripe beer, which she loves from Jamaica. I'm having a caffeine free, or I'm having a diet coke with a wedge of lemon or lime. And we're at the bar. We're just sitting at the bar, and we're, the, the bartenders are great. They're talking, and we're having a wonderful time. And it's just just a great atmosphere. The place is hopping. The music is playing. TVs are on, but no sound. It's great. And a waitress walks by, and uh, she uh, bumps into a, to a chair behind me. Not, not into me necessarily, but into a chair. And she had a bottle of ketchup, and the, the, the lid wasn't closed tightly. And the bottle of ketchup fell off of her tray, uh, hit atop of a chair, spun, hit the floor, and just uh, spit out ketchup. And I got ketchup on a T-shirt I was wearing just all over my front, just a splotch of it, like an artistic... You know, oh, the bartender, oh, no, oh, no. And they brought the you know, towel, and then the manager came over. Oh, and she was so apologetic. She was, oh, my, horrified. Oh, my God. <clears throat> she said, uh, I'm going to give you a free T-shirt for that. And so she went to the to the back of the restaurant, and they had T-shirts for the bar. I have it somewhere in the back of my house. I don't know where it is. I think I've worn it one time. But I got a free T-shirt out of the deal. Uh, they were horrified that this happened to me. But I wasn't bushwhacked. I just got sideswiped. <laughs> it's all good. Um, let's see here. Um, Red Stripe is the best, Robert is saying. Uh, um, it's, a, it's a drink. Robert's saying, Bruce, uh, the bushwhacker is a drink. Okay. Uh, Tom Henry, I always wondered of Robert Brandt. NCL always has a group meeting for friends of BW, Bill W. along uh, with the friends of Dorothy. Uh, that one I got. Uh, MG Toe, friends of Dorothy is for the LGBT uh, crowd. Um, crowd MG say, uh, Robert Brandt, you and I would be friends, uh, uh, Paul Wolgus, Robert Brandt, lots of us love Dorothy, <laughs> MG Toe, <laughs> lots of us love Dorothy, <laughs> funny stuff, well, there you go, um, yeah, the old drink packages to get people on board, so what you got to do, Christine just wrote in, Brushwacker equals best drink on the island, Kahlua, Bailey's, dark rum, light rum, amaretto, creme de cocoa, uh, Fragalicio and coconut cream mixed in ice. Where's the stretcher? <laughs> Where's the wheelchair to take that passenger back to the ship? Oh my gosh, Paul, because they had red stripe on the getaway and it was included in my drink package. So I was in my glory. Paul Wilgus is going, love red stripe beer from Jamaica. Jennifer loves the stuff, love the small stubby bottles. We had it in Grand Cayman. She loved that stuff. Oh, that uh, that wishwhacker sounds like a one-way ticket. Oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, Tom Henry, is a bushwhacker similar to a mudslide? I'm selling. I think a mudslide has crushed ice. And, and oh, maybe it does. Wait, I don't know. Oh, my gosh. This is scary. Paul Wilgus said, Christine Elkins. That sounds great. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say it's an after drink work if you're drinking. Uh, if you're working, um, would be a you know, drink after work. But uh, on a cruise, um, boy, uh, you know, if you can get it on the island at a really good price, yeah. But, boy, you want to make sure you get help to get back there. Uh, on the cruise ship itself, that could be a $50 drink, the prices they're charging. Oh, my gosh. Paul Wilgus, uh, that sounds great. Christine, uh, Tom, somewhat, yes, uh, uh, only way better than a mudslide. Nurse Nancy, sounds like something that would whack me on my tail side. Uh, Robert Brandt, painkiller number one, bushwhacker. Number two, hurricane and rum punch. Number three, a three-four. Tom Henry, I love the mudslide. We'll have to try a bushwhacker. Uh, Christine, yes, ice is crushed in a bushwhacker. 
And Jordan, my last cruise, we were in a suite. You can drink in the concierge lounge. That's where I drink. My upcoming cruise in 120 days, I will be in a suite as well where I will be drinking in the lounge right on. Robert Brandt, our Caribbean drinks tend to run strong. <laughs> Uh, MG Toe Nurse Nancy, start a five a D start a D five W N S on yourself. I have no idea what that means. Christine Elkins, about seven eight bucks in St. Thomas, seven eight dollars for this drink with all that alcohol in it. What a deal! Robert Brent, yeah, seven to nine bucks. Yeah, that's what they're that's what they go for on the island. Seven to nine dollars. Oh my god, N Nurse Nancy, funny MG Toe, a better hydrate and to take that. Yeah, I better drink a big couple of bottles of water. Then have one of those and drink some more water after. The, oh my God, you're gone. You'll you'll feel nothing. Uh, you'll you'll the pain, whatever pain you're suffering from, will probably go away. Oh my God, uh, Robert Brent. Remember, the bottle costs six bucks. That's all. The bottle costs six bucks. Uh, no wonder. Oh goodness gracious, unbelievable. You guys, I don't know if I can handle that. Unreal. Uh, how many thumbs ups are we talking about here? Let me take a look. 32. We got 32 thumbs ups with 44 people still watching this show at 6.43 Eastern time. We've been going an hour and 43 minutes with 32 thumbs ups still on the go. Thank you, everybody, for being so kind to me. If you can spare me a thumbs up today, that would be terrific. If you can watch my video I posted earlier, give that one a thumbs ups too. Uh, YouTube keeps track of how many thumbs ups I get, and the more the merrier. It helps with my channel's ranking and rating out in the big wide world of YouTube. Thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, Robert Brandt, retire and buy a bar. And Jordan, Robert Brandt, that bushwhacker or uh, bushwhacker sounds amazing. Have you tried one? Nurse Nancy, MG Toe, I would need a banana bag for sure. <laughs> Robert Brandt, one? Tried one? What do you mean, just one? <laughs> one. Thousand, one thousand might be the answer. He's saying, uh, "MG is laughing." And and Jordan drink, uh, drink Robert drink. R Reggie and her man love dark and stormy in Bermuda. Love it. Uh, thank you, Reggie. Um, let's see here, Tony Barnett. I I subbed also with um, the old beardless Tony account here. <laughs> thank you, Tony. Uh, <laughs> Robert Brand, thumbs up. Christine. Megan's Bay makes great bushwhackers. Also, Sunny at Alpha Jewelers are so kind to bring you free bushwhackers while jewelry shopping. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, drink a couple of these and come on into my jewelry store. Have I got stuff to show you? Oh, my God. Oh, Robert Brand, been there 30 years. Reggie and her man, ginger, beer, rum, and lime. Oh, man, Robert uh, Brand. Dark and stormy, great too. And Jordan, loving it. Thumbs ups everywhere. Richard C., off to dinner. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Richard C., coming back. I'll see you tomorrow, but not Wednesday. I'm off Wednesday. Christine Elkins, Robert Brandt. Yes, 1,000. Usually spend the day drinking them. Uh, Rob Souter um, uh, used to go sledding in the little town, northern Ontario. Bar made B-52s in juice glasses to the top. Whew, Donnell is here. Thumbs up, Bruce. Great stuff. What, what, what? Thanks. Donnell from Ireland. How you doing there, buddy? Welcome back to the show. Robert Brent, ma many jewelry stores will feed you drinks. Oh, for sure. You thirsty? Oh, uh, we'll take care of you. You can spend all the time you want here in my in my jewelry store. You don't have to go to some bar. Oh, my gosh. Reggie and her man. Thumbs up from Reggie and her man. Nurse Nancy, I plan to watch your uh, your video now, Bruce. Uh, later, Sharon, and that seed live stream as well. Uh, thank you, guys. 35 thumbs up are showing now. Three thumbs down. That's 38 on the uh, thumb action. Thank you, guys. I'll take all I can get. It helps the channel dramatically. Uh, Nurse Nancy, I plan to watch your video, Bruce. Nurse Nancy, buy all. Nurse Nancy, hi, Reggie Enter, man. Thanks, Nurse Nancy. Have a great night. And thanks for popping by again. Love having you coming by here. This is hilarious. Uh, Donnell, uh, thumbs up for sure. Loving your show. Uh, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, it's late where you are. I think where you are, it's got to be like 11-ish, uh, isn't it? Robert Brandt, you got thumbs ups from uh, Janu and Kaya. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate that, too. Subscribe to my channel. Become subscribers. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your friends. Oh, my goodness. I love it. Reggie, your man. Hi, Nurse Nancy. Debbie Manuel. Great show as always, Bruce. Back again tomorrow. Stay safe, everyone. Toodles all. Toodles to you, Debbie. Get well, please. And uh, and thank you again for all your support, Tammy. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Tammy, for coming by today. 
let me take a look at my uh, subscriber count here. This will tell me right now, 25, 26. Got a couple more in there. Thank you, everybody, for subscribing to sub channel uh, tra with Traveling with Bruce. Thank you all so much. Um, and Jordan, by Robert Brandt, uh, Juno and Kays. Uh, see you, Debbie, Bruce. Uh, great show as always. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and Jordan, too, too for all your support. Uh, Tony, uh, have a good night, Bruce. Great show. Thanks, Tony. You take her easy. Don't work too hard. And have a good live show tomorrow. <clears throat> right here in the man. Bye, everybody. Debbie man, Debbie Mail, saying goodbye. Kaya, sorry, typo. Robert, uh, Robert Brandt, bye, guys. Have a good one, everyone. This is Bruce uh, out of Creston, BC, where it's smoky and it's hot. Uh, what can I say? It's summer. Uh, saying thank you for joining me today. I'm not here on Wednesday. I'm driving to Calgary. I'll be broadcasting from Calgary. It's going to be kind of a kooky schedule. Um, going after, on after that. As soon as I know more on my schedule, I'll let you know. But I'm on the air tomorrow. I'm on the air Thursday. I should be on the air Friday. I'll keep you posted on the whole enchilada as I know it. And we'll keep her going. I'll catch my other videos if you can. A.G. Walsh uh, saying bye all. I'll be back from NCL. And Adrian, you betcha, A.G. Uh, let, let me know, A.J. Donnell, yep, it's 11.49, just in after a good night boozing in Cork City, Southern Ireland. Yes, sir, buddy. Thank you for joining me tonight. I love it. And uh, you can catch the rerun now if you want. Catch my new video. I did a video earlier today. Check it out. Bye all from Renee. Tom Henry, oh, no, the buffering spider. Well, if that's, that's happening, it's just time to go. Uh, Rob Sauter saying good night. A.J. Walsh heading to Seattle. Y'all take care. And Jordan, bye. Have a great day. See you all tomorrow. Laughing out loud. A.J. Walsh. Tom Henry, bye, everybody. Thanks, you guys. We'll see you tomorrow at uh, 5 o'clock and 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Trivia is on tomorrow night. I look forward to that with you guys. Have a good one all. See you for now. Bye.